yes, uh, DiGiorno Pizza, all I do is play as attorney. That's all I stream. I've been streaming for a little over three years, and uh, it's always been Ace Attorney. When we're done with the last Ace Attorney game, we just start playing the first Ace Attorney game again. It's like Groundhog Day, but with Ace Attorney. That's why the memes never die. It's called Ace Eternity. Uh, in all seriousness, chat wanted me to play it. They voted for it a long time ago, and uh, we're only just getting to it now. There's a whole other game after this. So yeah, I didn't want to play this. But I still don't. It sucks. Nah, it's pretty good. Joe, will you stream Among Us? Nope. Nope. Do, 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 do. I would stream Among Us if it was uh, with a bunch of other streamers, because then we all have like mutually assured destruction. I'm not going to stream Among Us with, you know, Jad's open and just recycling people, because all it would take is, is one person to sabotage with an epic gamer moment, and suddenly I'm banned from Twitch. Even if it's a temp ban, I just don't want to go through with it. Okay, so we have two new emotes, and they are by Merrick. We're gonna try them out and see if they stick. Uh, we have, I don't know how many emotes left we have. Um, so the new emotes are uh, Joe dot dot dot, uh, which I didn't realize that when you put them in a row, it kind of, it kind of makes a trail of the dot dot dot. I really like that. So that's cool. And we also have the, uh, Face palm, which I almost called JPH fish, but I didn't think people would get it. But yeah, J, J palm. There we go. It's J palm. Do 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 do. Did you do that on purpose, Merrick, with the dot dot dot, like making a line? Because if so, good job. So there we go. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 Yes, good job. You you know chat. You probably know chat better than I do. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let's let's do a calibration. Um, let's do a calibration a little later because no, you know what? We can do a calibration. Let's do a calibration train. Calibration chain go, train. Go for it. Train 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 train. Do 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 do. That's a lot of trains. Alright, that's good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so um I've been thinking about whether I want to say this all day, but I think we're just gonna say it. So uh one of you has been lying to me, and I'm pretty upset. So one of you, who's here, I know that you're here, I just saw one of you, has been saying that you really like how much I tease the weebs and how much I go against weeb culture. And, you know, teasing all the anime lovers in chat. And yet, you got me to raid Rasputin. Which, if you participate in a raid, 
gives you extra mana coins, bonus mana coins, to spend on getting a Yaya enabled. You secret weeb trader Flexen. Flexen is a weeb and has been lying this whole time. Congratulations on your coming out of the weeb closet, Flexen. All this talk about how movies are so much more artistic. Film is the greatest art of all, the greatest treasure. Joe, what's your favorite Kubrick movie? What is it? Anime? No, not for me. No, thank you. Secret weeb. Saving for the one mil absolution? Maybe, maybe. Wants more coins to get it from the raids. Alright, Joe, since it's your first day in the legal system, you have to pick a theme from the hat. <laughs> it's 100% true. Oh boy, I hope it's something good. Cowboy Cop, Dominatrix. All right, here we go. Streaming Cop, wowee. I'm already great at that. Uh, I think you misread that. Reaming Cop. Oh no. Oh no, this is Emio, 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 go to horny jail. Oh yeah, that's where the judge resides the whole time. Wow. Wow. I think there's another from Mio too. Squar? I'm a witness, Squar! <laughs> Damn, the wingspan. Judge, why do you allow this? Hmm, uh, looks like I just need a ghost. <laughs> So, uh, we have Witness Bingo, Lunch Lady, Monkey, Robot, Purple Hair, Cat Girl, uh, Delightful Hair Buns, Clown, Scientist, Fairy, Goofy, Puppet, Cowboy, Wacky, Perjurer, Parrot, Ghost, just Orange, Ninja, Quantum Moon, Samurai, Police Chief, Clifford the Big Red Dog, that's just Joms with Extra Steps, Laser Mask. What's next to which? Anyway, uh, sorry we're late today. Uh, I was trying to get some stuff set up for the for the moderator stuff, but uh, also before um, before stream, Finn wanted me to get a star frame in, in Galaxy, and I was like, yeah, "That's one star. How long could it take?" And then it was through the meteor storm on the molten melty galaxy. So. If you know Galaxy, then you know that, oh god, the motion controls work even worse on the Switch than they did on the Wii. <sighs> Terrible. Terrible. Do, 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 do. Thank you for the fan art, Emilio. We have two more. One from V. Vinny. Vivini. The Maya stuff is bland. I disagree with chat about the circus case and why the hype about this one. For now, the trial's kind of bad. Huh, interesting. I can see why he thinks that. Ten minutes later. I don't know what evidence to use. Nothing seems to fit. Joe, what the fuck? How do you not know? <laughs> it's just fucking tribal right away. This one is for Bob. How is Bob suddenly like, like fucking Bob of the people? Blobber was way better. Oh. Do it for Bob. Is it is this not going away? 
Who is Bob exactly? Who is Bob? Bob's gonna have an emote of his own in his fucking own Netflix spinoff soon. His own anime adaptation on Netflix. Bobblevania, here we go. You created him? Yeah, I g gave him a, a career just to end it. Hey, 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 Chiaki. 110375. Fucking Bobby Bob again! Bobby Bob 180. What the fuck? Annoyed. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. That's one of my favorite lines that Jackie had. Damn, Jackie's looking pretty good. Joe is taking more than two minutes. He must be trolling again. I'm a lo oh, look at angry dragon lawyer. Oh man, he's ascended to the next form of dragon lawyer. God damn. What do you want from me? This part is complete bullshit. Therefore, I'm justified in being not cogniferous. One tisk. Ah ah ah. Two tisk. Ah ah ah. If the streamer, being a foolish fool, did not play the game before, he has only his own foolish foolishness to blame. Damn, look at look at Von Karma looking pretty minxy. Damn. Alright, who do we like better, chat? Do we like do we like Von Karma or do we like Chiaki? Ooh. Split opinion. Thank you for this, fix it. This is great. Von Kar Von Karma's winning it, really? I'm sorry, we have to do a vote. I c I can't let this Chiaki slander go unconfirmed with a vote. There's no way. I need to know. It's a two minute vote, so you have to be fast. Okay, that's a lot closer than than chat was uh was making it out to be. Well, I can't believe it. I, I really can't believe Von Karma's that popular. Are most of you voting for Von Karma, like, weren't around for Dangarampa? This is basically just, are you a bottom or a top? Then why is it so split then? It's our chat. Maybe weebs wake up later than the submissive. <laughs> Recency bias? I think it is a little bit of recency bias, yeah. Looks like Von Karma's gonna take it, but only narrowly. If you're watching on YouTube, it was 52% to 48%, but just kidding, I'm gonna cut this off. This isn't going on YouTube. Oh wait, no, it's part of the fan art. It has to go on YouTube. You YouTube, I hope you enjoy. Okay, uh, I need to take away 6 million off Ayaya. Let me do that. We also haven't done the dad joke book in a while, but uh, I feel like we're just going to do that in, in rounds. Not, not a really good reward, to be honest. So I'm thinking that once you guys get, as long as this doesn't break uh, terms of service, um, it's done by the way. As long as this doesn't break terms of service, I have to check on the emotes. I think once you guys get to get a Yaya below 800,000, uh, I'm gonna give you an Ayaya emote that is just a Yaya, but only like 80% is cut away. 
So it's only 20% of the AI act because you've only unlocked 20% of it. So it's just gonna be like a little sliver on each side. And uh, and that and that can be your partial victory because you're never ever ever unlocking the rest of it. So that's as good as you're gonna get. So yeah. And it's just an A, yeah. It's just JPH A. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 800 million, sorry. 800 million. No, I mean what I said. Uh, Alright, so let's give your daily thing, and I think that's it. We're just gonna have a daily one today. Ayaya daily, 1 million. Every single day there's someone new here that is like, what the fuck is this Ayaya stuff that everyone's doing? I wonder how many votes the weebs get from people that just show up and are like, I don't know what that is, but I'll contribute to the thing at the top of the screen. Maybe this is the best thing that ever happened for weebs. Okay, so let me say thank you to some people and then we'll get started. Finishing the game today, by the way. Um, Raphael Ambrosius Costo has used 100 bits to say, Thanks for the Outer Wilds VODs on YouTube. Now I can see you fly into the sun again, lol. <laughs> uh, I chaptered it out so people can skip it if they want, but then they miss a punchline of a joke. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thank you, Aegis900, for the new sub. Welcome, Aegis900. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom Pretty 45 for the two month reset. Hey, Joe, enjoying the streams. Looking forward to Yazuka Zero. I'm looking forward to it too. It's like, it's it actually a game instead of what we've been doing with this lately. Not that there's anything wrong with Ace Attorney not being a game, but like, I, I like to, you know, just being able to move and having inputs that matter instead of just, you know, reading. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be a good break from it. Yeah. Please don't take that as slander on Ace Attorney. Just. I think you guys know what I mean. It's a different kind of game, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope I, hope I enjoy it. Thank you, Anarch Avacist. Anarch Avacist. I think that must be it. Yeah, thank you very much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the new sub. Alex6 has resubscribed for 13 months. Can't wait to see you play Ace 23 in May 2021 when you'll be done with Yazuka. Is it really that long? I love that it's just Yazuka now. We're, we don't even pretend that it's Yakuza 0. It's just Yazuka. <laughs> hey, I think we're going to be playing Yazuka probably for all of October, right? If I hate it though, I'm I'm just gonna rush through it. Like I will finish it. I'll commit to finishing it, unless you guys absolutely like unless it's an abysmal time. Like if I hate it so much that it's just miserable, then okay, I won't make us all suffer through it. But like, um, I I will finish it. Thank you, the cringy gamer. Oh, you'll fit right in here for the new sub. Welcome, the cringy gamer. You've been here all along and you never knew it. Parker Starfish used 100 bits to say, you know that being teased is a weeb fetish, right? Is it? I think everything is a weeb fetish. I don't think you could name a single fetish that that is, you know, not fucking a part of a part of weeb culture. Uh, thank you, Galoof, for the 36 month reset. Welcome to the three year club, Galoof. Thank you, thank you. Three years already. Goddamn. Thank you, Galoof. It's always fun to say your name. Don't know why. I like saying it. Trend kind of stuff you used to miss to say. Better use those extra mana coins on Absolution. Also, we were very good raiders. We threw lots of bits at Raz. Yeah, I kind of skimmed through uh, at the beginning when you guys were there. I looked back just to make sure you were all behaving. Um, like, you know, I didn't really doubt you, but I just want to make sure that I'm not sending, you know, pickle spammers for the whole entire stream. But yeah, you guys did well. Good job. I'm proud of you. For real. No joke. No meme. No sarcastic undercut. For real. Good job, guys. Uh, Shiva Burweeb has resubscribed for 17 months with how? How has it been 17 months? I don't know. Thank you, Shiva Burweeb. Shiv Abra. Shiv Abra. Uh, Fekker Starfish used 100 bits to say, fuck top Bob. Ooh, oh, I don't know if that's going to go down the same way as, as the other meme. Oh, I don't know. Good luck, Starfish. I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, Slock the Sock has resubscribed for six months with subbing for the confirmed Bob emote. <laughs> Uh, Kyrie Mind has rediscovered two months with Amazon Prime one dollar in Turkey right now. JPH Pickle, JPH Pickle, is it? Damn, that's a pretty 
pretty good deal, isn't it? I don't let's 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 not get into that just in case. Yeah. Thank you, Kyrie Mine. There's some mini bit war going back and forth again. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, chat bottom confirmed. Houston, Houston Moose, nice name, has, has subscribed for the first time. Thank you much, Houston Moose. I really like your name. Uh, Scorjo has used 100 bits to say, beware your nemesis, the anti Chadworth. No man's guy. <laughs> what? No man's guy? You mean the president? Uh, Lollipop has subscribed for the first time. Thank you very much, Lollipop. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Barrio, Barrier Trio Struckopose has used 50 bits to say, Hey Joe, if you are planning on watching JoJo, I'm just going to warn that the first part is kind of mediocre, so please don't give up on it after part one, and keep in mind it's 30 like thirty years old, so it's a product of its time. Uh, it's also batshit insane, and I'm looking forward to how you're going to tear it apart. JPH Cogger's part four is the best animated part, by the way. Yeah, I think that Shammy warned me that the first part isn't that great for, um, for uh, JoJo. Uh, or... I don't I don't know if he said it wasn't great or if he said that it's it's hard to get into I don't want to put words in Shami's mouth because I know that Shami loves Jojo So please don't take that as as, as gospel or whatever like that um, I think maybe he maybe he does like it now. I'm going the other way. I don't know uh, But yeah, I remember him saying that um, the first part can be difficult to watch the first time uh, Thank you polymock for the two month reset. Thank you very much polymock Jungle Robin has recently subscribed for 36 months another three three year club uh, thank you very much, Jungle Looking forward to the hundredth, uh, to 100 hours of pocket circuit racing. Oh, is there pocket circuit racing in Yakuza? What is Yakuza? I hear people talk about the some 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 cabaret and then mahjong and then like poker or something, and now it's like pocket circuit racing. Like what what the fuck is Yakuza? What is Yuzu? What what do we do in this game? Micrologist has gifted us up to Merrick Bentuzzi. 22 months. 22 months, Merrick. Thank you so much, and thank you, Micrologist. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Dick Cheney, Ace Attorney, has resubscribed for two months with just in time to say, I'm a lawyer before the meme dies, JPH Coggers. Thanks for the streams and the memes. What do you mean? Like, we're going to be saying I'm a lawyer for every single game ever from, from now on until we stop streaming. That's it. L memes don't die around here. Name, name a meme on stream that has died. You can't. You can't. They're all still alive. Do, do, do. You can't do it. You can't. Pro tip, you can't. What is your Yazuka? Yes. This is Ice Spaceman. Flashback? What do you mean? We do fla every Every stream we do flashback. Every stream. Do, do. Do, 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 Yeification, yeification wasn't a meme. Do, 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 yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're fine. All right, cool. Uh, so I just want to give a shout out. He, he, he doesn't need it. He's he's a big YouTuber boy. But I want to give a shout out to uh, Nikki Jakey, who just released what I think is the best video on Last of Us 2. Um, pretty respectful to the source material. Pretty respectful to the devs. Um, still gave it what it needed, I think. Uh, but yeah. So if you're interested in, in some Last of Us 2 um, videos still, I don't know how, but uh, I was. So yeah, uh, Nikki Jakey is, has the charisma. Like, um, I left a comment saying he has golden retriever energy, which I think is smack on. I love Nikki Jakey. I knew Nikki Jakey before he exploded in popularity, but yeah, he's a big YouTuber boy. Doesn't need any help from me, but I still want to shout out the, the, uh, the work that he did. It's a really good video if you want to go watch it. After my stream, of course. After my stream. Do 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 Hey, it's wilting a little. I'll I'll give it some delicious water, pal. Uh it's okay, I already did that. The watering can, where are you, Mr. Watering Can? Did you just call the watering can, mister? 
watering can for hope. All right, so we're going to the Haughty Clinic. Marsh Ray to detention center visitors room. From what the guard told me, it sounds like along with Mr. Ungard, Miss Andrews is also being detained here. Then we should talk with them since we're here. Yeah, but both of them are still in questioning. Hmm, and we don't have any time to waste. Yeah, visiting hours are almost over. Okay, so I think that there there's there's something going on here. Um, either with with Ungard or or D Killer that is going to make me very upset. And I hope it doesn't ruin the um ruin the story like if it is bullshit i hope it doesn't ruin the story if i hope it isn't bullshit i hope i hope it's like you know but yeah i i think that i'm gonna be very upset about something mark march 22 hoodie clinic reception never thought i'd ever come back to this place oh yeah so you're here to visit a patient hmm uh hi wait a second you're hmm, yes i'm director hody oh, ho ho i have fleas why are you still here? Um, yes, what is it? Um, can I help you? You can you can tell me. Um, yes. Director Ho Hody. Chadworth. Can you tell us what was all about the card? Um, yes, I'm Director Hody. Ho ho. Oh, you're the man from this morning. Um, yes, what is it? Ha uh ha -huh. Director. Francesca. How is Francesca von Karma? Um, you don't need to worry. Um, yes, she's in good hands. Because, you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. Mm, yes, hee hee. Mm, yes, and that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. You know he's not a real doctor, right? He doesn't look like Chadworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She looks so pitiful, absolutely terrified. Mm, yes, but I understand. Mm, mm, yes, her opponent was a gun, after all. Uh-huh. And when I snuck up on her real secret, like, she would scream real loud. Mm, yes. I see. I see. Ah, but she's really cute, too. When I do that, she'd whip me with her whip. Uh-huh. Boy, did I cry like a baby. Hmm, yes, but I think I could get used to it. Hmm. Whoa. Go back to your room. You're so mean. Uh-huh. So mean. My frisky friska. But that... I... Oh. This is us, chat. This is us. Okay, okay. I... Hmm. Yes, it's time for my IV drops. Hmm, yes. And what are those tulips doing in your hand, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Ah, I knew I shouldn't have come here. I'm a lawyer. Ah! I guess that's all I got. I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. Humph, but it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time to Von Karma's. I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. But, but that would have been too much for you. Uh, I'm sorry, this sort of thing happens all the time. There's no, how many times have you been shot, Von Karma? You need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over here. He was so unyielding, one has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my casse. It was the only logical course of action, given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and the irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I almost feel like, like, Chaworth and Von Karma are like the only adults here and Phoenix is just like, still like kid lawyer. Like fucking hell, man. I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ungard, you told Miss Andrews not to, to not testify in court today. Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that I made such a deal? You're, you're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, this trial would, or, would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem, whether she had tampered with the evidence or not. I have only one objective, to find Ungard guilty of murder. Even if he is not guilty, the end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the means. Miss Von Karma. Chowers gonna give you a lecture now of all lessons he learned in the undercourt. Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then Ungard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she is now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. Wow, we're just hating on on Andrews, man. 
but you had to know she was. I think visiting hours here are about over. So, if you'll excuse me, my curfew approaches. What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Chadworth. You gonna apologize for how mean you were to, to Andrews? Like, seriously, it was really awkward. It was really bad. Maybe that's how they, they do things in the undercourt where you were gone for a while, but come on, man. You're back in the real world now. You're back in kangaroo court. You can't, you can't just tell someone who's mentally unstable and suicidal that, yeah, go kill yourself. I don't give a shit, but first you're gonna testify. What the fuck? What happened today at the trial, Chadworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, you, I know you knew about Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far... Ah, uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen right, the courtroom is a garden of judgment. I am putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. Alright, that's it? Okay. By the way, Chatterworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. No. That, 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 that's pretty much every every trial. Do you have any idea what you have, you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This, I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. Now I'm just gonna walk out and not explain it. Peace. That card, what in the world is it? You mean this? Listen right, this is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. It's a conch. A special investigations team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. They've recruited me, that's where I've been gone for the year. We're, th we're the L team. I, I understand. Their task is to find the owner of the card. A man called Sh <laughs> 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 called Shelly D Killer. <laughs> <laughs> and just as his name states, he is a killer, an assassin, the best at that. Just like I am a Chad, and worthy of it, an assassin. Picture card added to the courtroom. So who is this Shelly the Killer? The Killer is the name of a long-standing line, line of assassins. Long-standing. The name first appeared a hundred about a hundred years ago, I hear. You know how everyone used to take their names from their occupation, like Smith and Miller? Well, they're killers, so they just became the killers, and everyone thought, eh, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Shelley is the professional name for the third heir to the D-Killer name. He's like Leon! So because this, his professional name is Shelley, he leaves cards with a shell on them. He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Well, he did a really fucking shit job keeping fucking Maya, uh, like, imprisoned. Like, what the hell? Why would he do something like that? We think it is a part of his duty to his clients. His duty. If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I... kill him I just got an assassin to do it so I wasn't lying he 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 it wasn't me I told the truth I said I didn't kill anyone and that's right I just paid for it to happen that's bullshit that's that's not how it's worked before. That's bullshit. It's just if they're hiding something. 
This this bullshit. Oh, I'm mad. Oh, I'm mad. That's fucking horseshit. No, that is three v three one bullshit. Oh my god, that's so fucking awful. That's how it's worked before. No, I don't think it has. We'd have to go back through all the other Psyche Locks in the whole game, but I don't think it has. I don't think that the Psyche Lock has appeared when we specifically ask a deliberate question and then they deliberately lie or anything like that. It's always like when they're hiding something. Sometimes we don't even know what it is they're hiding. Oh, that's awful. Why? Why just not have that part? Just don't have it. Just have it be like, oh, I wonder if he is guilty. Why did we that? What we don't even need that. Oh my god. What do you mean that's not what it? No, that that has to be it because as soon as we mentioned D Killer, he was like, oh okay, all right, yeah, you take the cake. Like like, like that. Like he he was completely like fucking buffoon. And then as soon as we mentioned D Killer, he was like, whom? All right, you can do it. Like that's what we're doing. All right. D Killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that, th that this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. What? I guess that even honorable ass assassins can exist. Uh, so you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing on this case? in this case? Does he only kill people that he thinks deserves it as well? Or I don't... Okay. It, it would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it. Wouldn't you agree? Shelly D. Killer, huh? I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? Tell him. I guess I should tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? What does this kidnap the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. How do you, how can you do, what are the connections that Chaworth has? Really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Sh Mr. Chaworth is going to stop trying to console me, Chadworth. I don't need your pity, Mr. Nick. There's no way you can find her. We don't even have a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I, I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. No, right. I will take care of this. Chadworth will take care of it, but after this, you're gonna have to call me Dadworth. Right. Listen, you need to know something. Juan Carita was killed by Shelly D. Killer, and the client who ordered the job is Matt Ungard, your own client. Please stop. I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only as we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelly D. Killer. But if you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Letter of introduction added to the court record. Received from Chadworth allows Bear to freely investigate the crime scene. In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. Okay, so I am I am willing right now to, to not go completely ham and say that's garbage until I have time to go back and look at the other Psyche locks to see if, if, if the rest of the Psyche Locks, you know what, it doesn't even have to be all of them. If, if most of the other Psyche Locks come up from a direct question that, like, prompts a lie, then, and it has to be a lie, okay? Like, then, then alright, then it's fine. But if not, if, if, the re if most of the Psyche Locks are just, like, prompts that they're hiding something, like, they, they don't want to answer or they just kind of dodge or they just say something and it's like, okay, they're hiding something, then... Like, that's bullshit, man. And it's really bad bullshit because they didn't need it either. We'll meet again if anything should happen. Now, if you'll excuse me, my curfew approaches. Mr. Nick, do you do you think Mr. Ungard hired an assassin? The Megatama doesn't work in a set way. You can assume it depends on the, on the person when it fires. Well, then it's useless. I don't, I don't think that it just works in different ways all the time. I don't, I don't like that answer. If that is the answer, like if, if that is said at some point in the games, then okay, fair. I'll accept it. But that's, that just makes the whole thing kind of shit. No way. I mean, he doesn't have a psyche lock. Yeah, I guess not. Maya. 
please, all I ask is you make it home safe and sound. It's literally magic. Why should it be logical? Oh. Oh. Okay. <sighs> Date question, 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 question. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. I thought she got out. Or is this like a is this like a flashback thing? And even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that that up, like how Nick does when er, with everything in court. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Click. Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. There's all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. What's this? It feels like there are a lot, a lot of glass balls here, and these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad. I, I, I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. I think, you know, you should just, you know, it, it's still worth it. Oh, is it not bait? Okay, so there are different kinds of magic systems, and some magic systems that can make the rules up a as they go along. That's fine, but you can't really build murder mysteries and stuff like that out of them. That's kind of, that's kind of crap. And setting up expectations from that system is very difficult and is usually kind of crap. Um, but even among soft magic systems, uh, there is a sense of eternal internal consistency. Like, like there has to be. Even if a soft magic system, if you establish that you know X does Y and then later X does not do Y, then that's breaking the conventions even of a soft magic system. Like, I, I mean, magic soft magic systems can only go so far before it it just becomes making shit up as we go along, and it becomes like fairy tale nonsense and there's a place for fairy tale nonsense there absolutely is but this is not fairy tale nonsense i've unlocked the door with the with this card i should probably go and take a look around date question 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 What is this place? Like, as much as that, as it might seem from the games that we played on stream that I prefer things to be 100% rigidly consistent and everything makes sense logically, that isn't actually a case when it comes to a lot of stories. Like, I can really enjoy soft magic systems and, and soft science fiction, too. That, that wouldn't be actually... What is everything? There's high, hard sci-fi. Yeah, soft sci-fi, yeah. I can definitely enjoy that. It's just that, you know, we don't really see that a lot used very well in video games because most video games just don't have good writing fucking period. What is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. Can't we just leave? Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Now where's the power button? Mm, phooey, it's busted. I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see Nickel Samurai on TV like that. All right, Maya. Uh, I can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. Ah, oh, it's, it's lamp shading it. Okay, cool. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess. And this is a VCR? What the hell is a VCR? There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what is an antenna doing here? Oh, hey, it's a computer. I've never really used one before. Um, I have no idea where the power switch on, on this thing is. Drat. There goes my plan to use this somehow to, to get out of here. There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, looks like there's something written here. Let's see. I think it says, would love Celeste. Ooh, I bet this could be a clue. Interesting. All right, so there's something to do with, La with Celeste. That's weird. What's a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Oh, how cute. But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. So this one are the rules to magic? Okay, this is the last comment. So if if you were to pick up a magic wand and point it at someone and say, Avercadaver, and they died, right, in a story, and then you go to someone else and you go, Avercadaver, and instead of killing them, it, it, it turns them into, like, a hot anime girl, then, you know, you've broken consistency even with the really soft magic system that is Harry Potter, if we're still allowed to use Harry Potter as an example. So, like... Superman is usually the, the, the go-to example of, like, if Superman got shot in the head with a bullet made out of iron, 
you know, and it bounced off his head because he's Superman. And then, you know, the next day he gets shot in the head again with the same bullet and, and it's the same situation. And this time it kills him. Then you'd be like, whoa, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like you can accept the magic, but it has to be, there has to be consistency within it. Now, this is usually what I call internal consistency. It's not just me. A lot of people call it that, but for some reason, internal consistency, like that phrase just triggers some people. I don't know why. I, I don't I don't know what's wrong with that phrase, but yeah, it, it just triggers some people for some reason. So I try not to say it all that often. Uh, get locked, of course, and it doesn't look like I can use the card to open this door. Go through the the cat flap. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through there. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. Yeah. It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is. For now, I would suggest you remain, co you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways you mean dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? D -d 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 dead I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting I am an assassin. No, no way. You're lying. I mean an assassin. People are not always who they appear to be. March 22, 7.04 p.m. Hody Clinic reception. Mr. Nick. Hmm? Oh, yes, Pearls got caught up in my thoughts about my situation. Mr. Chadworth has left you has left you now. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. Mr. Ungard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's get going too. Okay. Are you really fired, Gumshoe? Like, that ain't cool. Wow, everybody looks really busy with something or another. Hmm, they're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass that victim's list around. You've gotta be kidding, there's over 100 people on here. Um, Mr. Nick, is Mr. Ungard really that big of and bad of a criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Aw, uh, arg, I have too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say? Oh, yeah, there's a message here for you. A message? Merry Christmas. It's from Matt Ungard. Ah, uh, here you are. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. So, Mr. Lawyer, dude, I've got some really important... Something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually, I have a favor to ask you. Ask me to you. I have this cat named, named Shu. If Phoenix didn't use the Magatama to determine whether or not his client is guilty when he has that power, that would also be bullshit. They would have to remove and change the rules of Magatama completely to fix the on-guard logic. Um, see, I don't know. Like, I always thought that and, until they used it in that moment, I hadn't really thought that they could just walk around and just ask people and that the Magatama would, would, um, would, would trigger. So I thought it was just something like the Magatama is is tuned to the situation somehow through Maya, and that whenever they found someone that was hiding something, that it would it would go off and like so relevant to the investigation because Maya is like and, and and Nick are kind of have somewhat of an emotional connection. It is magic, right? Um, so I think that that's that's how I understood it at the point because everyone's always hiding anything. So you know they could go around and just ask someone something and it would just be like doo -doo 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 -doo, you know what I mean? Like uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Oh, I didn't have anything. Blah, 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 blah. You lying fuck. You had McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I feel like um, just opening this can of worms is the bad part. You're right. Like it should be triggering all the time. People lie all the time. Do like why doesn't it trigger in the middle of court? You know, like. So I think it was just a mistake just to just to do that. I have this cat named Shu. I didn't put out a lot of food. Uh, when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed shoe for me, my dude? My house is a little ways down from the hotel, right? Are you so dumb that you're sending us to where Shelly the Killer is hanging out? This is terrible. Let's hurry. We have to feed his cat. I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is, is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Matt's note jammed into a pocket. A client's request is a request. Guess I should go check up on his cat. Oh, 
Uh, how do we get back there? Also, if you don't care about consistency, that's 100% fine. You don't have to care about consistency if you don't want to. You don't even have to care about plot holes if you don't want to. Like, you can enjoy stories with without um, caring about consistency. It's just that if you do, if you don't care about consistency, then you don't really care about plot. You care about, like, characters, I guess, and theme. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if, if that's what you prefer, then that's what you prefer. All right now, Mr. Nick. Lots of people are like that. Let's go look for clues. We have to, we have to for Mystic Maya Sake. You shall not pass. Gasp, Miss Old Bag. Don't devalue my name and turn into a gasp, you spiky-headed pedophogger. An inferior legal practitioner, especially one who deals with petty cases or employs dubious practices. Wow, that is just like the perfect word. Holy shit. Good job. Because of you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Chatty Boy, just as he promised. I'm the bad guy, but it's gonna value all my trade was probably one for me. It's all your fault. You've awakened the wild beast inside of this old bag. Arg. See Billie Eilish was in the Cyberpunk uh, 2077 trailer. Kind of put me off a bit, actually. Uh, Miss Old Bag, keep your hands off of me. This helmet is airtight. No air, no airs, no airs gets in, and no air gets out. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Um, don't think you can get me to move with silly questions. You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. Yeah, there was a new Cyberpunk trailer today uh, with um, Keanu and uh, Billie Eilish's bad guy was the, the soundtrack for it. And it's fine. Like, I like Billie Eilish. I like Keanu Reeves. And I like CD Projekt Red. I like Cyberpunk. But there's something about promotional trailers like that that, that, that just feel so so off-putting, you know? But maybe it's because, like, I've already been convinced to buy it. It's like, you're just trying to convince me to do something I've already decided to do. So it's like, eh. <laughs> Which is a really dumb reason to be annoyed, but still, as as I'm watching, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, like, uh, you're a million light years too early to be asking me questions, Ripper Snapper. Arg, looks like the only way I'm going to get any investigating done is to first do something about this kooky alien. It's for the, uh, it's for the normies. Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, it's it's fine. Um, uh, you're a million light years too early to be asking me questions, Ripper Snapper. Oh wait, let's do this one. I don't like celebs in games. I'm not a big fan of them putting um, uh, internet personalities into the game with with quests and stories and stuff. I'm fine with them with them having voices, having voice roles. I actually think that's kind of cool. And I'm even okay with with some cameo kind of like motion capture sort of stuff or being scanned. But them like having like full characters that are them with with their voices and even like it seems like with the Jesse Cox one that it's that it's linked to his kind of platform. Like it, it, it's a Jesse Cox kind of quest. That kind of puts me off. But if it wasn't, if it was just like Jesse Cox is a character and he plays a character with a voice, like, and it was just a normal quest and nothing to do with Jesse Cox, he was just playing a role. Then I think if I was upset with that, I would be wrong because like, why not? Like why, why not have, you know, people do that? But the fact that they're doing that is, was kind of, kind of puts me off a little bit. Hmm, maybe if I show her this letter I got from Chadworth, um, Miss Olbag, if you would look at what? You want me to look at this worthless piece of... Worthless? Chatty poo! Ugh. Is that her perfume? Pheromone de Mar. I smell. Shudder. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? <laughs> Yours truly, Miles Chadworth. Yours truly. Humph, that's, that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Chatty Poo said so, you understand? Letter of instruction given to Miss Old Bag. I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. Alright, I thought we were gonna go feed the cat. It looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Chadworth. That may be, but you know nothing's going to come of it. But so mean, Mr. Neck. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ow. Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a hamper on my face somehow. Um, so anyway, let's continue on the investigation. Our investigation. Okay. Do you guys want me to stream Cyberpunk? If I okay, so if I stream Cyberpunk 2077 when it comes out, not only is chat gonna be off, I, I'm just gonna pretend I'm not streaming. Cause I don't I don't wanna have like I don't even know if I could do that. I don't know, I'll think about it. 
Ah, what? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into Unguard's room today. Why? The police's main investigation team is going to be in there all day. You hear? I wonder if they're on the team in charge of investigating the killer. Honestly, I wouldn't watch it because I'm probably going to play it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the two, right? Yeah. So they'll go in there, set one foot in there, and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Olbeck. Maybe it should just be like um, what we did for Red Dead Redemption 2. We'll just do like a, a preview stream. We'll just play the first couple hours and then see how it goes. All right, if I go back to the office. No, no, no. Okay, from the detention center, I just want to... No, criminal affairs department. No, um... From the clinic? No, okay, I don't know how to get there then. So I guess we're, we're just gonna go there at the end. Maybe that's where it stops. We go feed the cat last. What game are we talking about? We're talking about um, maybe doing a, a, a first impression stream of Cyberpunk 2077, and then that's it. I think that would be fine. I could even ch have chat open for that. If I had chat open for a first impression stream when the day it comes out, I think that would be fine. Seats for the spectators of the post ceremony show and press conference, but it's too bad neither event is going to be held now. Yeah. living room Where should, oh okay so that we get oh that's kind of a weird way to make you go to live what sure is dark i'll turn on the light oh it isn't his house okay wow so this is what a star's house looks like must be nice to be rich come on mr nick let's find shoe the kitty cat shoe meow so i guess this is shoe shoe add it to the evidence record uh what a lovely cat i think she said meow tee -hee. And would anyone else be terrified if this was hanging in your living room? I would always be scared it's gonna fall. No matter no matter how much the contractor assured me that no, there's no way it's not gonna fall. I'd be like, nope, that's gonna fall and kill me at some point. The cat seems to to like pearls. Pardon me, Phoenix. May I help you with something, Mister? Oh, uh, we're lawyers, actually. I'm Mister Ungard's lawyer. The masters. Then you must be Mister Wright. Yes. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Nice to meet you. Meow. Come on, Phoenix. He has the middle of his face stitched. A giant bicycle is flying through the air. How are you not seeing that from when Maya was kidnapped? That bicycle. Pearls is one where is one where you don't have to pedal. It moves on its own. Really? Wow. But sorry to disappoint you. It can't fly. Oh, it's too bad. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Neck? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Fay Manor then. I'll show you one when you do. It's a very comfortable and, spa and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. Why didn't the Psyche Lock just trigger on, on John Doe there? He just lied. In any case, I don't have any reason, I think. All right, what is it with me and feeling inferior today? Uh, okay. I'm having fun. Ah, there are masks here. Yeah, and that one in the middle is a still samurai. The ones next to that are the pink princess and the evil magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo Old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a, lo a, a lot about the still samurai, Mr. Neck. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Neck. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. All right, so is Maya in the basement? Like, Oh, she's through there. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. I thought that's the door that we came in. I thought it was the front door. That would be a weird place to put a front door, though. That was dumb of me. I bet it's for Mr. Ungard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe. The door, it's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Hey, look at this. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind taking a look at this. I'm afraid I cannot offer up anything special about it. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of evidence for a trial. Polite yet snotty with a touch of rude. He's the stereotypical butler, all right? Damn, so we just offered it to him and he still didn't, it's still in the trigger. Hey, I'm here because of um, Matt's note. I was wondering if you, oh, you don't care about it, okay. must know all sorts of things about Mr. Ungard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. 
And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm, how typical butler-like, as it were. The butler did it. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this resi residence? Well, sir, I would have to say maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to blah, 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 blah. Shoe. Old Shoe. That's a very cute cat you got there. I think Shoe is a pretty good name for a cat. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies Shoe. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. Why didn't Unguard know you were going to feed the cat? Well then, I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Matt's note crumpled into a ball and thrown away. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, uh, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. But there's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler in charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. <laughs> so now, now if you'll excuse me. Meow. Psyche lock on shoe. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Magatama has a cooldown. Blizzard had to nerf it. It was too OP. Uh, I mean, to disagree with those words, it procced three times in five minutes when we were searching the hotel. It's a, it's a hearthstone. <laughs> Once you get to hotel, Viola Hall, looks like we're the only ones here, and yet the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring the, for clues about D-Killer. Damn, I wish we could run into him. So, in the, in the photograph, a lot of these were missing. Interesting, okay. Hey, city boy! Lotta, you're still- that was awful. Wrecked course. An investigative photographer eats or starves on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, like something's always about to happen. By the way, did you see the news? Lotta hearts and smash! But do you have a camera? Wrecking given. A photographer's gotta have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here, speaking of cameras and feeding the mouth. Do you have mine, you bread thief? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Um, would you please take a look at this? Nope, sorry, no can do. Only thing I want to see is a steaming hand towel. Um, what? A steaming hand towel? Need one for my eyes. Today that just ain't a good day for my eyes to be looking at stuff. How convenient. Maybe I'll have to use that one next time you show me something. I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really gonna shell out the bucks for the info I got? Lotta, you were lottering in the hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda, but it's kinda sketchy on the timeline. Old Bag is, is a space woman, so I think she can time travel. Brace yourself, Phoenix, here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Followed a few stars around, got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop with a few of them too. Got drunk off my ass. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security ability also wasn't in this hallway the whole time either. I guess that means there's one. No one who can tell us who came and went that night. Aw, oh, towel treatment! The callback. Good job, micrologist. So about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that diddy I wrote? Yeah, can I believe what you've written? Mm, excuse me. Didn't get much sleep last night. You mean the stuff about Ungard shoving his manager lady into onto Corita? Yeah, uh, well, I reckon you best not be believing that, Bobby. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Like Joe writes his videos, whatever came to mind. Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bullshit. Like Joe's videos. Hey, what's- oh shit, pump. Hey, why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I sh just shrinking here? Um, what? Okay, you know what, I don't care. Ah, my baby, my $1,600 baby. What's with that red-coated prosecutor anyhow? The guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey, you're horror, yeah, you're, okay, what the fuck is that? That was not, you, gorsh, what in the Sam Hill, hey, hey, there we go, you're that red coat's friend, ain't ya? So put in a few good words for me and get back my camera. You want, want me to do what? 
Listen, nag the guy real good for about five hours and I guarantee he'll give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Hey, hey. Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Oh, shit. Okay, see you then. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Have some gumbo. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it right to me. Yeah, okay. Would you please leave, just leave already? She's the worst character. It's the worst character. March way to get where hotel core reads hotel room. Oh, what? Von Karma? Mr. Nick. What is that otherworldly gas ghastly moaning? Oh, yeah. I, I hate evil ghosts. Well, but you're a spirit medium. I guess you have more reason than anyone to hate an evil ghost. All right. I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon. G -g -g ghost Excuse me. Well, oh, for fuck's sake. Excuse me, watch who you're calling a demon, brat. Uh, zoinks, it's the alien. Who are you calling an alien? Oh, it's just you, Miss Oldbag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with youngins today? I came down here to pay my respects to the poor Juan and you're disturbing me. You know what, I kind of, I, I take it back. Lada is not the worst character. The worst character is who is current, is whoever we are currently talking to, unless it's Chadworth or Von Karma. Those are the worst, that's the worst character in the game. Alright, Night of the Murder, please talk to me about the Night of the Murder just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial, I was full tricked to see by that fraud of a photographer in her note. She was loitering around here with that imbecile look on her face. Yeah, and somehow I stole the camera and looked at the note before she took the photograph, but, you know, people in chat just don't think that's an issue, and why am I fucking looking at those details in a murder mystery with that imbecil imbecilic look? Uh, on her face. Okay, got it. N now, hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least make me sound better than that. Oh, alright. I've seen everything. But you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, minding my own business. Yeah, I like the judge and gumshoe too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So it's not like- and everyone in Big Top turned out to uh, Big Top was good too. So it's not like I had time to waste standing around here the whole night. It's actually my favorite case in the whole game, I think. Uh, in retrospect, I was wondering if you could tell me a, a bit more about Mr. Karita. He was the most popular star, you know, especially where it counts in my- But you know what? I think- I think- I think I like Ace Attorney 2 more than Danganronpa. Danganronpa 2 is my favorite Danganronpa. I think I like Ace Attorney 2 more than Danganronpa 2 just because of Turnabout- Turnabout Big Top. In fact, if the if the whole game was just turned about Big Top, not only do I think that would be enough, I think it would be an improvement too. He was the most popular star, you know, especially where it counts in my book. But I heard that he was lagging behind the polls against Mr. Ungard. Um, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all, you know. But he was going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presence. It's a show of. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big and certainly nothing to shake a stick at. <laughs> Marek, did you just flip your own emote? <laughs> Mr. Th uh, what is it for? <laughs> the presents, they're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Oh. There's lots of things here that aren't bears. Presents. I mean, it must refer to the presents. All of Mr. Karita's presents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of Juan without thinking about bears. That's true. Bears? Why bears? You don't know? When my dear Juan was in training, he fought barehanded with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. Look, it's just like in those young people's dr dramas. I can see those two tuckered out down by a river going, Heh, <laughs> you, you sure can't fight. You too, bub. You too. Now this is anime. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of croc and conk. So ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice bears. I thought he said he hated the bears. Growl. I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. What is the, inf the infernal racket? It's one of the presents going off. Sounds like it's already 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Or bear time. Urk, that startled me. I thought I was going to die for a second. 
8 p.m. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time... No. Time sure flies. It's hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. Beep, beep, beep. The transceiver. Beep. Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't hurt her, have you? It seems you are not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news. So it would seem my present did you no good. Yeah, in fact, it hurt us. No, Mr. Maya, Mr. Maya. One more day, please. All I ask is one for one more day. Uh, I'll get an off guil guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose if I must. I need that acquittal more than anything else after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's all right. All right, hiss, then hiss, 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 a little s What is with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems, sis, sis, bad, s connects. Sorry, one second, I, 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 I'm getting a bad signal. I'm going through a tunnel. One, one moment, sorry, sorry. This, this never happens to me on our ransom calls, I swear, I swear. It's very unprofessional, I'm sorry. So, you know what? You can have your extra day. I'm really, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay, here we go. All right, change the batteries. All right, all right. Sorry, you still there? Can you hear me now? Damn it! Did the transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. Beep. What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden, it became nothing but static. Ah, uh, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya. Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? I should probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner, the better. Who's an electronics expert? Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector's editions, stuffed teddies, plastic models. It's pretty overwhelming. There's even a few in the trash can. Yeah, I get the feeling maybe they didn't like this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, poor teddies. It's hard to bear with all these problems. Growl. Okay. Who's an electronics expert? Probably Chadworth. March 22, Ryan Co. Hey, welcome back, pal. Did I ever mention that I'm an electronics expert? Whoa, that's just what we're looking for. Oh, all right, pal. Let me have a look. I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That That's nice, thanks. A rich man's luxurious full course meal out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have the time to eat. Oops, looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You've got to be kidding, and here I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know, there is one way I know how to be helpful. I'll just rig this electronic can opener out of spare parts around the office. Did I ever tell you I was an electronic expert? Oh, wow, look at this, this, this thing. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try asking him about. Do, 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 do. The transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick, you should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Did I ever tell you about this time I rigged up a bomb on an island somewhere? I could totally fix this. Oh yeah, this this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It it broke, pal. When I was taking when I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke in the static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. But I can't hear on those frequencies for a long time now. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself. That's strange. It was, I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't. Maybe someone on the other end was making those static noises. <laughs> Mystic Maya, come over here. We're going to play a prank on, on, on Nick. Oh, hey, hey, okay. What are we going to do? All right, so I'm going to pretend that we, we're losing signal, and I want you to stand next to me and, and hiss into the microphone. So it sounds like we're in the last connection. It'll be great. It'll be so funny. All right, you go. You go. All right, oh, Nick, I can't. Oh, I'm there. S -s 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 oh, I have to go. All right, good. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just I went on a little journey there. <laughs> Maybe it was electro electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference. Electromagnetic interference. 
<laughs> so what is electromagnetic interference? It's something what, that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen, the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? That doesn't happen anymore, does it? That used to happen all the time. And it used to be like, oh, you knew when a phone call was coming in because, because the screen would start going, Woo! it'd be like, oh, phone call's coming, and then your phone would start ringing. Uh huh, computer. Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Did that happen? <sighs> oh yes, the TV does does that. Hmm. So that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So the room you were in when that inter interference you were in when that interference to the transceiver happened. That's a weird way of saying that. There's got to be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. And it only just started happening at the end of the conversation. It sounds like the hmm, like a listening device or something. Ah. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Karita's room, the scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. It's like a metal detector. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, alright, pal? Alright, ah, wait, come shoot. Oh, yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! Stepping stone to hope. We should be going too, Mr. Nick. Alright, let's go. March 22, Gatewater Hotel, Karita's hotel room. Hey, you're finally here, pal. You're finally awake. Sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly, I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one, just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. It looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? Me, of course. I'm an electronic expert. Ah, uh, seeing this sure brings back memories. I made my own microwave. How many people can say that? Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks like a little beating. <laughs> If you, if you went to someone's house, and they said to you, Hi, I made my own microwave. I think I would leave. <laughs> Just like, no. No, I'm good. I don't, I don't want to deal with someone who fucking made their own microwave. Look, I'm, I'm good. Let's meet up. I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul. <laughs> It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But, but you can't set the sensitivity, so it's going to beep at anything that gives off electro electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. There's a listening device or some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're going to find it, right? Right, so first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough looky see, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up, so keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press enter to lock on it. There's a lot of things here that's going that are, that's going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? Alright, I'm going to stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Alright, it's this. Ah, what a lovely bear. Growl. Ah, this must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's, it's a robot. It's a real robot? Yeah, as opposed to a fake robot? It's a real one. I guess a fake robot would be made out of cardboard, yes? How many horse powers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, well, look, it's a, it's a bear, so, um... Oh, it's not that. A cell phone. Nope, no bugs in here. A cell phone. What? Don't tell me you don't know what a cell phone is. 
I'm sorry, I've never seen one before. Now that she mentions it, my cell phone couldn't get any reception while I was staying in Kareem Village, and Pearls has never lived outside of that village, so, well, I guess I can't say it's impossible to live without one. I mean, yeah, but didn't we take her to the circus? Come on, there, she must have saw one at some point. Lamp check, listening device, nope. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Knight? Oh my god, chat's IQ. Whoa, 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 what? What's going on? Why are people spamming you done? Oh. Okay, have fun. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah, and they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll be more conscientious from now on, sorry. Lamp check, listening device, nope. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah, and they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Okay, so we're gonna do them all. All right, let's check all the lamps. Lamp check, listening device, nope. There are a lot of lamps in this, yeah, that wasteful. I don't really think listening devices is a of all places. How did the guys take you fucking like a, like a year to realize that you could do that. Come on. Wow. Um, yeah, when I grow up, I want to say Japanese. I should probably keep my mouth shut here and not destroy her dream. It's the juice. The radio's on playing. Oh, it's Kids Question Corner. Professor, Professor, why is the earth round? Yes, why is it, Nick? Why don't you listen to the radio program a little more, Pearls? It's, the Earth's flat, man. All right, so are we looking for a bug, a signal somewhere where there there, there isn't a, any electronics? Am I doing this backwards? Uh, yuck, this this air filter is covered in dust and dirt. Yeah, come on, Mr. Nick, let's wash it. I wonder if, he, if being a neat freak makes it even, even the tiniest dust bunny look colossal. Merrick's right, I'm secretly proud. I'm secretly proud. Oh, nothing. Well done. Cha cha, real smooth. Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? I just can't imagine the listening device being inside this alarm clock. It just um, sort of reminded me of something that happened a long time ago. Oh, well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't in here. It's the thinker. And here we have a dryer. Nothing unusual here, I think. A dryer? Oh, if you use it next to a TV, it'll make the screen look all weird, right? Yeah, and when that happens, it's called electromagnetic interference, right? Hey, good memory, Pearls. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. Wow, there is something. It looks like it's been keep, I keep warm this all this time since the murder. Well, Mr. Scruffy Detective always says got to keep the trial and the trail and crime scene warm. I think the keep warm in this case is a little more metaphorical. Alright. I thought it would be in a bear for sure. Do I have to look at, do I have to exclude everything before Gumshoe comes back in and is like, hey pal, it's over here, like. This is, this is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Okay, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean. No, not yet, but this bear's eye is. Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's dig this big fella's eye out and see what we got. No, you can't. Such a violent act. Then we rip the eye out and then ding, ding, bing, bong. Whoa, whoa, No. That's... It's a miniature camera, and it looks like there's more. 
there's a transmitter and a timer. A what a what a what a meter? A transmitter, pal. I'm an electronics expert. Oh, this is this more of that high tech stuff? So this tiny thing is a camera? Yep, it's a it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's small, high-grade video camera, mostly used in security systems and Mission Impossible. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with, comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is only the camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tape inside, it is somewhere else. Somewhere else. The footage is changed into radio waves, and then it's sent to that recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know you're right. Spy camera added to the court record. Set to record the victim's room from 8 p.m. for one hour. Was running at the time of the murder. How do we... Did he just say that? Man, I missed it. Or is it just like, that's when it had to be. So what is the transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage that the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. It's called The Thinker. You can set it to turn the camera on and record at a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time. Yep, let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go on and go for one hour. Oh, okay, there we go. 8 p.m. That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I guess. Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Well, then, then, maybe. Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape. What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at... It's bound to have had a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Changes the footage taken by the spy. Oh, okay. All right. Mm, uh, spy camera. What do you mean? Radio waves. Mm. Uh, things kids get up to these days. So there was a camera in this bear's eye, and it was disguised as a present. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Corita this present? I uh, don't know, pal. But this means that someone out there's got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radios can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh, Sniffle. Is there really no way to find out? Stuff there added to the court record. I got it! What? Hey pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna shove it up my ass. I'm going to go around to the electronic shops and see if I can find out who bought this. But that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even if I have to search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Spike camera and transmitter given to Detective Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah, much more capable now that he's no longer a, uh, a detective. Seriously. He's gone. Yeah, but Mr. Scruffy the Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ack. You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. Chadworth, what are you doing here? I follow you around, right? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. Uh, I see, thanks. Don't thank me yet, we still have to find her. Hmm, so there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal, huh? You are one lucky man, right? Do you know how this- do you know- do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? What? Um, I have no idea. Hmm, of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade, and only a small number of these are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere, however, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that? Mr. Neck, can he really? Well, I guess so. He's Chadworth. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He's a fucking genie. He's the god of all lawyers. Hmm, it's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. Are you, you're just gonna carry the whole big bear out of here. I'm, sh I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Stuffed bear snatched up by Chadworth. See you soon, right? It's still here, though. It's still here. Wait. What? Why are you doing this? 
I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. Did I read that wrong? But besides that, right? Until court, recon until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corita? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Juan Corita's real killer, Miss Andrews, passed. The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. Ungard. And this card, Shelly, the killer. I thought Shelly had an E at the end, between the Y. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Chadworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. What? Why are we still here? March 22, 9.14 p.m. Gatewater Hotel, Corita's Hotel Room. What? It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder. I wonder if Mr. Chadworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd probably say not. Why aren't we at... I thought we were going to be at the court. What the hell? Police are professionals. Pearls will find her, so don't you worry. And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. Okay. Huh. Alright. Time for this to say, good thing Chow we're talking with him. Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock. Oh, okay. So the real person who killed Mr. Corita was that assassin, Mr. Shelley D. Killer, right? And the card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired D. Killer to begin with? Who is his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want it to dirty their own hands and blood. But whoever this client is, there's still a, there's still a killer. Didn't, didn't, we know already. We, we know. Who, who, who could have hired the assassin? Leon, do you think it was Mr. Miss Andrews? I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then no, it can't be. Matt Ungard himself. Wasn't that? If Mr. Ungard really did hire the assassin, then he is not innocent at all, far from it. He would be guilty of the crime. But it can't be Mr. Ungard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him, Mr. Ungard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Corita? Alright, just so we're clear, dude, I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Corita, okay? I didn't see any psyche locks at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the time today. She said something interesting. But I also remember that I forgot my uh, pearls. I forgot to put fresh batteries in the Magatama. Oh, shit. No wonder it didn't go off. That would be better than what happened. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had bet everything on the German Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought anyway. It looked like somehow Juan had it in his hands, a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it, had it been revealed. Mr. Ungard secret. What is the secret? I'm, I'm really curious what the secret is too. I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corita was going to reveal the secret. That means Mr. Ungard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corita silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. Ungard. There's no way around it now. Thanks, Lily. How's it going? All right, are we done? March 32, Gateway Hotel, hallway. 
Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9 p.m. already, but we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of the secret Mr. Karita held about Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrews' real intentions. These two, these are two things I must know tonight, but aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm, I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. We're going to break in. It's the opposite of a prison break. To ask our our client some questions, we are going to break it. Just call him. He always has his phone. March 22, Gateway Hotel. Hey, wait. What is it, Whippersnapper? All I know is no nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole, the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care, but the request came from Chatty Boo, so... Chadworth? And he said... Do what I say. If you feel angry, direct your anger at that unsoph unsophisticated lawyer. What the fuck, Chadworth? So I'm going to feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Uh, gee, thanks a bundle, Chadworth. What a pal you are. Chadworth's being really sun dear to us, man. This is absolutely top secret, so you had better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the pre presents. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know. It was to catch poor Juan in the middle of a scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know, that gossip uh, that's been going around about my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? But I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Corita. I'll let you in on another secret, young, and I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious, puffy-haired photographer girl, the nerve of some people, spying on people by herself as if I wouldn't want to see it for myself too. Wow, the alien actually admitted her true intentions were a change. I know what you're... I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet that it's nothing good, but I didn't say anything. So you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, they were, they were something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh, I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? Were they actually in a relationship? Because she said no, and uh, maybe. You don't know that manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impacts. Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That Celeste girl, she's supposed to get married, you know? Married? You mean to Mr. Corita? Sigh. Really, you young kids today don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. Three days after their marriage announcement? What in the... Why would Miss Impacts want to kill herself? She was going to get married. Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? But they were going to get married, right? They, prom they promised each other, right? They held a grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. Is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But why? Why would he do that? Yeah, and weekly magazines never lie. That was not in the magazine in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. Why would we trust an old bag? Nick, that night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager Celeste killed herself. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. March 22, Gateway Hotel. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. Hmm. I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. Looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. It doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Well, he's out there with that camera asking around at all the electronic stores. Then I'll make some salad for him for dinner. It looks like Pearls really appreciates what Gumshoe is doing for us. Um, Mr. Nick? Hmm, yes? Where is the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought lettuce before. What? Uh, I guess I have to give up on making a salad then. Guess the lack of lettuce is a kind of problem. Let's just eat Charlie. Visiting hours ended a few hours ago. Looks like we're not going to get a chance to do Mr. On Guard Night type of stuff. That's very important. Yeah, don't need my cigar. All right. Cool. March 22, police station. Feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. 
You're Mr. Ungard's lawyer, right? Uh, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for, a real decisive witness. A decisive witness? You mean for the Ungard case? We're taking the witness's statement right now. Got to hand it to Mr. Chadworth. What's Chadworth up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. Mr. Nick? Between the kidnapper's demand and now this, I can't see any way to win here. Is it Goofy? Oh, yeah. Mr. Chadworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. Merry Christmas. What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on, go and talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content. Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. March 22, Detention Center. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. Ungard and Mr. Andrews are in this detention center. Who would you want to talk to? Now, then, whose story do I want to hear? Uh, Matt Ungard. Dude, it's Mr. Wright. All right, let's ask him. Hey, M Ungard, did you order, like, an assassin to kill, uh, Karita? <laughs> Actual Dio? Is that a JoJo reference or actual Dio? I'm not sure which one's right. Has subscribed for the first time. Thank you very much, Actual Dio. Poker Starfish used 111 bits with what other better games could you be playing right now? Uh, maybe one with an ocean of stars in it. Outer Wilds again. Uh, thank you, All Nerd, for the new sub with Prime. Welcome, All Nerd. Pocket Starfish used 222 bits for would you like to explain the nuanced difference between hard and soft magic systems and how people how, and how each can fall fail in a narrative sense or should people just go to Hello Future Me's YouTube videos which go into depth? Uh, I, I don't want to call that conversation back, but yeah, it's uh, I'm sure there are YouTube videos that are much better than I can make on the, on the subject matter. <sighs> they both have their strengths and weaknesses for sure. Yeah. I'm assuming that the explain shit on YouTube is pretty niche community, and y'all are y'all are aware of each other. <laughs> Solid story. He's 100 to say. I hope this is okay, but I send you a DM on Discord about the Magatama because I think this is really important to get straight. Okay, I'll check it out after um, after stream, but uh, I can't promise that I can get back to you because there are lots of other DMs I should get back to first. I don't see what there there is really to get straight unless we go through the, the past ways that it's used and see. Violet Impetus has resubscribed for three months with happy to support my favorite weeb streamer. Thank you very much, Violet Impetus. Thank you, thank you to get a good, uh, sorry, uh, happy to get a sub from a, from a weeb viewer. There we go. Got it out there. Nailed it. Static Toss has resubscribed for nine months with subscribing to the best weeb streamer. Thank you for from the, the best weeb viewer that's subbing. Thank you, Static Toss. Damn, nailed it again. Thank you, Corvo Loso, for the 213 sub with JPH Joe. Dot, 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 dot. Corvo, pretty sus right now, not gonna lie. Pretty sus. Thank you, Gauzy, for the new sub. Very welcome, welcome, Gauzy. A bit close to Gauche, but welcome, Gauzy. Uh, Axel has subscribed for the first time too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Axel. Or I'm I'm Zale, not sure. Top Lolly is using 100 bits to say, I just watched the new Smash character trailer. I'm not okay with this. Yeah, it looks kind of awkward, don't you think? In terms of how it fits to the rest of the game, it looks a bit awkward to me, but um, gameplay might be fun. I don't know. Tell69 used some bits to say, this trial is just like if you took the worst characters from the other cases and brought them back for one mega hit special Dan's game, Dan's game, Dan's game. It's it's not that bad. I mean, it still is pretty bad, right, chat? But it's it's not that bad. I hope it ends well. Thank you, Idra, for the two month three sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jacka for Fogatria, Terry Teria. I'm sorry, I can't say I can't say your last name. Thank you, Jacka. I'm very very sorry. Thank you for the new sub. Joe's Retinus has used 100 bits with. Oh no, my retinas! If you pay mono coins to flip the uh, Dun emo and put three next next to each other, it says uh, Ayaya across the top. The real Ayaya was the friends we made along the way. Wow! So you're telling me that everyone that was doing that in chat earlier uh, used mono coins on that instead of unlocking Ayaya? Hmm. Wow. 
Wow. Impressed for real, though. Gotta say. Impressed. Did you notice that? Because you're Joe's Retinas and you got special eyes? I'll set her as, as 108... Sorry, used 188 bits to say gumfuck voice. I made my own microwave. It's over the range. Yeah, over the range. That That's a dead meme, but it's still going, I guess, right now. So I guess it's fine. You done, you done. Snail or Slug has you have to say, when Pearl says Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya, I always hear it like Dr. Zeus from Planet of the Apes the Musical. Was it Dr. S no, it's Dr. Sayas. Dr. Sayas, Dr. Sayas, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya. That's it, that's it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya. Do, 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 do. Raphael Ambrosia Costuo has used 300 bits. Legit don't know why chat is spamming you done, but here goes, you done, you done, you done. It's uh, their, their uh, ghetto AI, I think. I noticed, I noticed. And then 200 bit follow up with, ah, the, ah, the weebs, of course. I wonder how much we could just get away with by just blaming it on the weebs. Just like, you know, hand gesture, the weebs. Uh, Pocket Starfish used 100 bits to say, the weebs are wasting mono coins, flipping you down, all according to Kikaku. Yeah, exactly, that's what I said. K uh, asterisk, Kikaku means plan. I'm sorry I know that now. Isolated Space Man has used 100 bits to say, weebs can't understand internal consistency, but can figure a way to make a yaya out of you done emote. <laughs> Outsider used uh, 900 bits. What's all the bits today, guys? Thank you. Uh, screw it. I plan to save these bits for future clips, but I want number one next to my name for uh, for a bit. Ah, I see. Cheer 900. Did it tick over because it's October? I just set it to the. I have it set to the default. Thank you, Outsider. I hope you enjoy your your number one spot with the 900 bits. But please, no bit war for real. I, I don't. I do not like the the bit wars. Uh, Puckered Starfish used 142 bits to say, "What are you doing here, Chadworth? I follow you around, Phoenix. Your delicious man buns memorize me, and I snap out of it once you turn around." Yeah, that I, maybe that's why he's so uh, so mean to us when we do snap around. That fits. It fits. I gotta say, it fits. Ro Rotiler used a bit to say, "Ayaya was a, a diversion." He got done. Ayaya was a diversion. It was. It was. Tell 69 used a thousand bits. This is unacceptable, Joe. How do we uh, anti Ayaya uh, fight this uh, grave injustice and affront to the Democratic Channel Points Aya unlock system? Should we ban it? Should we ban the flipped Yadani emote? Maybe the Yadani emote's gotta go. It's gonna be Yadan. I say, Space Man, making you laugh makes my day. Aw. Oh, thank you for making me laugh. Thank you for, thank you for the bits, everybody. And uh, thank you, Tell 69, for the thousand bits just now. Thank you so much. Too many bits. Too many bits. That's a lot of bits. A lot of bits. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, the court requires that you dab. Oh, Lily's not here. I can only I can only dab when Lily's around because she has to um to witness the dab. How do you know, how do you feel knowing that Xenoblade birthed the Yadani emote, also birthing the bootleg Ayaya emote? I, I like the Yadani emote, so I'm okay with that. If you care about logical magic, read essentially anything by Brandon Sanderson. He does the best magic systems in fantasy. Yeah, I've heard that, that he has a logical um, uh, magic systems. My name is in Brazilian Portuguese, but you got it right 90%, says Jacka. Oh, cool, cool. All right, maybe I'm not, I'm not that bad. It's okay. For anything about the magic book discussion, there's an Ace Attorney crossover with Professor Layton. Yeah, I've heard about that. In that game, they are sent to a world with magic, and you have to defend witches. In that game, you have to show contradictions around the witch's spells, and its spell rules prove um, she, to prove she she isn't the killer. Okay, was that a spoiler? I, we'll never play that anyway, so it's fine. Actually, it, it wouldn't be, wouldn't it? Because you, you always know that the person you're defending is not guilty. That sounds fun, actually. That sounds fun. Dude, it's Mr. Right. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you. I hope so, too. Chadwick just dropped a bombshell on me by saying that Juan Carrito was killed by an assassin and that the assassin's client is this man, Matt Ungard. What's wrong? Mr. Ungard, there is something I must know with 100% certainty. Hmm. You seem kind of different. You're not totally, totally not like your, your usual lawyer, lawyer dude self. All right, here. Look, stare into this thing that has new batteries. Could you please take a look at this? I know it may, 
Must seem important to you. Well, if it's not important, I'd rather be in bed. All right, cool. Um, about the press conference, you mean the one where Juan was gonna dress up as a nickel samurai? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked like somehow Juan had it in his hands a had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Could you please fill me in on what the secret is, please? Oh, wow. Uh, he didn't even answer and it popped up. Huh. Wow. Same room, same guy, same rules, same Megatama. Huh. Wow. Huh. Uh, thank you, Raphael Ambrosio uh, Costu. Again, I hope I'm saying your name right. I think, uh, I think, um, I think I'm pretty close, right? For a thousand bits, another thousand bits. Holy shit. Well, I mean, uh, if you don't reverse the Ayudan, it's still the same. It starts with a Y. Anyway, thanks for the great for the great content, Joe. You can be yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> thank you, Raphael. I think that's that's enough for them now that they've noticed it. Oh well, I guess that's it. Monocoin challenge is done. Congrats, Weebs. You win. You found a way to get it. I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, don't tell me. Psyche locks. You said a secret, right? But I don't have any idea what it is. Do you do? Did you know about Mr. Karita and Miss Andrew's relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. So this would be something he cares about hiding then. But why would he not care about hiding the fact that he hired someone to to uh, to murder Juan? Like, if he didn't care about that, hiding that, he would just say it, right? Like, it, it, he would just be like, yeah, there we go. Like, what? But, but I don't know if any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you I don't care what Juan did with his life? Uh, Miss Andrews, she had a purpose in mind when she started to see Mr. Karita. Her mentor was Mr. Karita's manager, and Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste's, Celeste Impact suicide nut for him. Celeste, does that draw any memories? Chat, I really don't think that there's going to be any conclusion here that makes the Magatama use, like, in the uh, in this game make sense. I, I really don't think that there's going to be any consistency to it at all that we can find. Like, the best that we're going to find is a compromise that it's like, okay, it's not really that important who gives a shit they could have just not put it in the game and it would have been fine like it had me going for a while that that this guy was innocent but like we're going to the second trial now knowing that that's not the case anymore but meh. like i really don't think there's a way to find consistency it's a fool's errand to to, to um to try to find one if you took away the ayaya challenge do we want it back yeah okay you know what we should take it away and we should have like maybe a hundred million uh monocoins to bring it back there we go dude i suddenly just got, got totally hungry you up for pizza my treat yeah um mr nick what's a pizza is it a kind of pea like green peas let's go eat one later okay i, I got caught off by the pizza dude at the shop that's too bad well how about we get our minds off of this topic and talk about something else okay Discord went through the all, all Megatama uses and it's consistent. What do you mean? We just saw one that wasn't consistent. Woo! We just saw one that's not consistent. It, 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 it was literally inconsistent right now. Woo! Woo! Mr. Ungar, am I being trolled? Are you connected to Miss Impact Suicide in some way? Wasn't that a different question? Yeah, and the psyche lock showed up before he even answered. We asked him a question, and he had some in the hide, and boom, it showed up before he even answered. He didn't even have to lie. Joe always starts howling like a wolf when he disagrees the chat. You've never hear, heard me howl, Scarab Blob. If you had, you would know. Your name is too close to Bob for me, by the way. Getting a bit scared. It showed up because he did not answer. He did answer, though. It just showed up before he answered. Joe. 
Joe, it's not a lie detector, it's a secret detector. Okay, well, aren't you, aren't you helping me here? <laughs> Is, isn't that helping me? <laughs> Look, there's there's only one way that this makes sense, all right? This this is your only out chat, all right? And it's so ridiculous, okay? The, the only way that it makes sense is if he ordered someone to kill Karita and didn't fucking realize it, okay? Like, and he, if that, like, like, that's so dumb. That's what happened, isn't it? 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 That's what happened. 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 Okay, even if that is even if that is the case, right? He still said, um, that's not what happened. Even if that is the case, he he was like, okay, I'll take you on as soon as he heard the killer's name. <sighs> well, I'm done. Joe is just overthinking. How am I overthinking, man? What the fuck? I'd rather be Jode. This this is what it is all the time. Is that whenever whenever something happens, it's either I'm baiting or I'm overthinking. <sighs> Multiple personalities. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna get to the end and we're gonna and we're gonna ask him and he'd be like what I d I didn't I didn't order anyone the D killer to 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 do a place in order and then he's gonna raise his hand to his face and go Correcio it was me I did it for us Correcio what who the fuck are you Correcio don't worry we I, I got the killer to use my seesaw trick don't worry oh yeah well oh, makes sense all right now let's see let's hear what the secret of yours is. What if Mr. Karita had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Ray, I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole night- the whole time that night. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me, huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Karita, especially on that night. Uh... Where, where's all the camera stuff? I thought that was added to our evidence. What? G Gumshoe took it? What? Okay, hold on. Chat, we're not actually physically carrying around this button and this knife. Like, I think we are carrying around these files, but like, we're not carrying around this picture card. We're not carrying around the guitar case. We're not carrying around the, the, the wine glass. Some of them we are carrying around, for sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we have. I don't think we have something that that uh, we can use here. No, I don't think we have anything. I don't think I have enough evidence yet. Should investigate and gather more clues before I try again. All right. Then how did you email the type the bullet? We are. I did. You probably typed that before because of the, the 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 stream delay. We are carrying on some of it, but we're not carrying on all of it. How do I, how do I make you go away? Hey, I want to talk to someone else now. The guard is on. There is no one in the who doesn't fall over. Okay, do I just leave? Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour, but there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? 
I thought your client was mad. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about the secret Miss Cr Mr. Corita had been had on uh, Mr. Ungard. I'd like to ask you about Matt Ungard if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Ungard. Is that a clue? If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. About Miss Celeste Impacts, I had finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I, I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide, and it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I want to get her suicide note back and to burn it. You want to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread just like another piece of gossip, but I never held any murderous intent toward Juan. I would never do something so stupid. The suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Why did you try to frame Mr. Ungard? It's that simple, because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But there had to be another way. The police are excellent at doing their jobs, so they'd figure it out, right? Yes, <laughs> they're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason, so please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh, did you say something just now? Psyche lock, huh? Wow, but you know, you haven't played Last of Us 2, Revenge is bad. Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrew say, Revenge. Okay, did we even ask a question there, or is it just uh, like she has something relevant to hide? That seemed like it just came out of just, like, it being prompted. Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. On Guard for the murder? I've already told you countless times it's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Ungard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said you know, I know you said something earlier, you said revenge. So you're saying I was talk I was taking my revenge out on Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. I just said that word because it's word of the day on my dictionary. That's the book I'm holding right now, Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. If there's something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Celeste? Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, I think we can just go with infinite life here, but let's save it just to try. So let's try the this first because it says someone. Celeste, there's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings and even revenge, and that is Miss Impact Suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. So we're just saying the same thing to her again. This case has a lot of that. On top of that, the one who had who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ungard, it would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? Nope. <laughs> no, but I'll get there. <laughs> uh, Tell, uh, strangle with scarf and stab with a stab with a knife. Uh, sharp and Uh, no, I can't. I don't. I don't have anything, right? Is that is his secret something to do with that? And that's what that is. I don't think that would work though. Even if that is it. No, I don't think we have it. Huh. 
Hotshot Star who plays a Nickel Samurai is rivals with the Jammin Ninja. Okay, I don't know chat. I like I feel like I don't have the information, but maybe it maybe it wants me to like take a shot in the dark with something. Like actually he he's the reason why she killed herself, but I don't think that's it at all. Let's try it. That's it. Yes, and what sort of relation is this supposed to to explain? Well, this impacts the Sun Guard. Before you start, Mr. Wright, perhaps I should request to see proof that your brain is wired correctly. If you push it on oh, damn, okay. So now I don't I don't have anywhere else to go though, because I can't break Matt's um Matt's uh thing either. Alright, let's let's go to the cycles again, see if we missed anything. March 22. Oh, Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me. Uh-oh. Mr. Powers. What happened? Why are you here? I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers. I was talking with the detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home, when all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Oh, they said my face and whole self in general look suspicious or something. Well, I guess I can see how they thought you look suspicious. Sai, I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? Yes. So, about this testimony you're giving, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. They haven't told me. But it sounds like I saw something impor pretty important from what they tell me. <laughs> you saw something important. What was it? Uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, especially not that lawyer, he said. But we're bros. Come on. W who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's me. Oh, wrong voice. Yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya and myself are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's all right. Ouch, I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? This is going to do a lot of damage to Matt, you know, because he's got that refreshing like a spring breeze image going. Oh, that's a secret. He's not refreshing like a spring breeze, but what is he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been ki kind of a player with women. He would never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say it's just a game to justify himself. It's just a game. What? How horrible. That's unforgivable. Ow. So sorry. Didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once, there's only one person in the whole world who won't swoon over me. One person who won't swoon over him. Leon. His manager, you know. Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Miss Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? Ah, uh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? A dazzling sort of image, but aren't you a part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of the other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey. So did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrews mentoring her suicide? You mean Miss Impacts? We heard something about how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Rat, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Miss Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Alright, Wolverine. Hey, so have you heard this? Celeste left the suicide note, and they say that Juan went, went and hid it. We heard about that in court today, but there wasn't any actual proof that she had left the note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Carita. Why do you figure so? Because he hid it. Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, It looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Carita by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well... That's some good info, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrews, we're both at the detention center right now. Okay, so, uh... He... Slept with with her? Did did he show up in, in the Jammin' Ninja costume? And it was until afterwards? Because it's this game, and uh, that fits, doesn't it? 
Okay, so you you cheated on Juan, or like, did did he like force you into it, or like what? Um, there are still things I don't understand or know about. I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Hey, that's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. Yeah, I know. Beep. Hello. We're in trouble now, pal. I'll I'll be back at the office real soon. What's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened. I succeeded. Mr. Chadworth, he... Chadworth. Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's going on, but... Oh, he got cut off. Well, what's going on, Mr. Nick? Gumshoe said we need to go back to the office right away. Then we should hurry back. I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about? Mr. Nick, pull yourself together. Um, maybe it'll be good news. Somehow I doubt that. What took you so long, pal? Mr. Chadworth couldn't stick around forever and had to go. Well, what happened? We got him. We know who bought that spy camera. Huh? Th this quickly. And this bear is what gave them away, pal. The bear. I figured it out, pal. I figured that, that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Um, but, shh, pearls. And, go on. So I don't know if that was skipped on purpose or if I slipped, but yeah. It was like, wasn't that Chadwick's idea? There's only one person who bought one of those bears who's related to this crime. Who, who is it? Old Bat, who would be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Matt Ungard. Huh? Matt Ungard, your client. That's who, pal. And here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Are you sure you heard right? That the person who bought this bear was? I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is the credit card receipt for the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. That's an exact match to the price of that stuffed bear. A receipt, that's all you have? Nah, it's not just a receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ungard because he was wearing the Nickel Samurai costume, pal. And there's no one else who could possibly... I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ungard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ungard himself. My, my sight is failing me. This can't be. Credit card receipt adds to the court record. So what about the spy camera we found? Ah, uh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you for, to, for you to file away as evidence. Spy camera transmitter stuff bear right the court record. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought. I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Corrida's room is Matt Ungard. Why? Why would Mr. Ungard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Corrida in one of their rendezvous. I bet it's not good enough for me. I have to know the, the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. Ungard, I mean? Yes. I'm I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder I wonder what we have we'll find out next. I'm scared of myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt Ungard, what in the world have you done? Okay, so I'm guessing that we are going to go to see Matt on guard and we're going to use this evidence to prove that he, for, to get hit what his secret was, and that secret was that he was having an affair with Celeste and Pax. Affair might not be it though. Uh, it, it could be just something that they were involved in some way, in, in a way that really annoyed Juan or something, but I don't know. And then we're going to go back to Adrian Andrews and, and tell her that, and that'll be the end. Instead of Adrian Andrews and then, um, and then Matt on guard. Um, so there we go. I think that's probably going to be the end of that. Uh, so we're over time, so let's take our break right now. Thank you, Z Simon Nero, for the 213 sub. Enable a, a yee yee, please. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, uh, Simon Nero. And Equist has subscribed for the for seven months in a row with Ayaya. You weaves in your Ayaya, man. You weaves in your Ayaya. Thank you very much. I say, 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 you this to say. So now the Ayaya challenge will unlock Joms. No, don't even joke about unlocking Joms. Nope. Nope. Joms is cursed. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Anyway, uh, go get a drink. Go walk around. Do what you need to do. Brush your teeth. Be back.
All right, I hope you all enjoyed uh, Gumshi Radio while we were gone. So uh, Solid Sora has uh, proposed an explanation for the Magatama and has messaged me on Discord about it. So Solid Sora has been your elected representative chat. So if this is wrong, then you're all wrong because this one person is wrong. So the explanation is pretty much that the way it works in this case is completely in line with how it worked in the game so far. If it worked like you thought, then the Magatama would consistently, constantly trigger against the, I, I, the actual guilty person because they have a secret to keep sorry for the DM during stream, but this is important. Okay, uh, sorry, I misread that there. How the Magatama works most of the time is that it triggers when someone is holding a secret and tries to protect it. They're blocking, they're blocking you trying to get, blocking you getting to that secret. This means there are moments when it doesn't trigger, for example, when you ask something and the person doesn't feel like it's related to the secret. If you ask someone who had hired a killer if they if they killed said person, then that person truly doesn't believe that this doesn't make them the killer, and then the, then the Magatama wouldn't trigger since he isn't hold it, since he isn't hiding that he is the killer. In his mind, he isn't hiding anything. It would trigger, though, if you asked the person if he hired an assassin and he didn't want you to know. The Magatama isn't perfect, but logic outside court is pretty tight most of the time. Why it doesn't work in court is never explained, though. So, if chat it likes this and this is the argument that is being proposed that if you ask someone who hired an assassin to kill somebody or hired a hitman if they killed them and they say no and your argument is that those separate events are so so separated that there wouldn't be any thought in his mind at that time that oh yeah I didn't kill it but in his head he's like oh well I did hire it though so I am involved like no like I cannot agree with that, I'm sorry. That does not make any sense to me. If you think that makes sense, great. I'm glad that you can enjoy it, but that does not make any sense to me whatsoever. I think that I would have to uh, to go through the rest of them to see how tangentially they've been related uh, for that one, but like, there's no way that he's not sitting in jail, like on, on, like potentially on trial for murder, thinking, oh shit, are they gonna find out that I hired the killer? There's no way. Unless he accidentally hired the killer. Like, like, how the fuck does that work? Person who hires an assassin probably doesn't think like a normal person. I feel like that's just a blanket explanation that just jumps over and, and explains so much bullshit. Like, no, I, I can't accept that. Like, you're right in a way. Anyone, like, there's that whole thing that, the, the idea that anyone who, who pleads insanity when it comes to, to a murder charge is just trying to get away with it. But then there's also the argument that anyone who would commit a murder is in a way insane. You know what I mean? Like, it's, normal people don't commit a murder, but... self-delusion is a thing. Okay, well, they're gonna have to point that out then, but I don't think there's gonna be any level of self-delusion that we're gonna see. I don't know, like... Was he drunk off his ass? No, it doesn't make sense, chat, because even if he didn't, like, why was he, as soon as he heard D Killer, why was he like, oh, okay, fine, you know? Who has ever been normal in this game so the whole thing just never has to have logical consistency it's it's still at its heart about murder mysteries chat i don't think the murder mysteries are the whole point i really don't i think it's i think it's more about the entertainment of how everything comes together but it still is asking you to make logical connections and it still is demanding that you pay attention and be thinking about its mysteries and what's going on i just like it does get some leeway for not being a complete whodunit like it really does it's more like a how or why done it you know so it still does need some consistency to me. I mean, saying people who kill are not sane is pretty mad. People who can be who can be not sane and not uh, harmful to others. Um, murder is an issue of morality, not sanity. Uh, I think if your morality is so fucked up that you're willing to kill someone, um, that you can make an argument that that's that's a form of insanity it depends though it depends like like w is it completely premeditated then i think then yeah okay i think you can make an argument i don't think i would agree with it but i think you could make an argument that anyone who ha who kills someone completely cold blood premeditated is um is is on some level insane i think you could argue that I, again i'm not saying i would agree with it but i think it would be a a, a pretty solid argument um killing anyone at all like no of course there's going to be like accidental killings stuff like that Yeah. 
you're working really late, you know, it's already past 10 p.m., dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax. Don't you know that ignorance is bliss? But if you really want to know, let's talk. Matt's secret. Now let's hear what the secret of yours is. What if Mr. Corita had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude, I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I can't keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me, huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Corita, especially on that night. All right, so the camera or the bear? I'm gonna guess the bear. This bear was in Mr. Creator's room on the night the, the night of the murder. Like, he clearly cared about what we thought about him because he was so vehemently about, like, I have, I have, I can clear this for you right now. I have not killed Juan or anyone else for that matter. You know what I mean? So so clearly he cares what we think and he doesn't want us to think that he's involved or the killer. So that would show that he's he doesn't want to be found out about the fact that his involvement. So, like, again, like, this is the last time I mention it unless it turns into a big thing in chat because, you know, that never happens. Like, the, the only way that this is going to make sense for me is if if he doesn't know what he did. Like, that's the only way. And I just cannot see how that could be possible because of his D-Killer line. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. So it's a present. It actually looks kind of classy, if you know what I mean. Yes, I hear it's quite expensive, which is why it's very odd for this gadget. Was, this gadget was found inside this bear. This is a very small video camera, and it was hidden inside this bear's eye. Maybe it's a really curious bear. <laughs> well, whatever this bear saw was sent somewhere using this transmitter, which means someone on the night of the murder was secretly filming Mr. Corita's room. Humph. I guess Juan had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm? You sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corita was... It was you! Mr. On Guard, don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met the Mr. Bear before, dude. Uh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. On Guard. If I didn't know how you work in court, I think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here's proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Uh, do we have the receipt? We do. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ungar. It's from y it's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from this is that I spent 3800 I go to that department store all the time, okay? This 3800 this could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's a banana, Michael. What could it cost? $20? It's ivory, and it's got elephant hair for bristles. Oh, yeah, yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, ooh, elephant hair? Is that what people use nowadays? Anyway, the store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph. Did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so I can ask you one- so I can ask you one thing? Yes. You're my lawyer, right, dude? So if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked why you set the camera up yet. And what your secret is, of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know, because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Karita's room and filmed it in secret is... Uh, shit. You wanted to know about what was going on with the gossip, or... Okay, what is it? Okay, so, like, there's, there's two options here. Either he is working independently from from this and he just wants solid proof that it wasn't him that did the killing or 
Like, th this is not something that uh, even um, D Killer knew about, Shelly. Or he wanted to know about their relationship or what was going on there. I think it's the relationship. How do I say that? Do I do I go with the gossip? Or do I go with do I go with Miss Andrews? Or do I go with just just Juan? I think I just go with the gossip, right? Adrian Andrews. There is a rumor going around that Miss Andrews and Miss Corita were having secret meetings. You, who is keeping tabs on Mr. Corita, you are going to reveal this as fact and turn it into a scandal, isn't that right? Dude, you can be such a moron, huh? Oh man, Mr. Lawyer dude, that kind of scandal, that's the good stuff, that's what we in the industry call juicy. The good stuff? Juicy? Look, we can get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'd be the end, they'd be the end, dude. Too bad that wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish your reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy on Mr. Creator because of Miss Andrews. Then there's only one reason you can think of for you to do such a thing. The real reason you set up the camera in Miss Creator's room what? So, to, to, to see the murder, right? That was my other thought, right? Is is that it? Is that valid for what I want to say? I think it has to be, right? Okay. I think that has to be it. If I really want to set up the spy camera, I wouldn't have set it up in Juan's room. It would be in your office, dude. Huh? My office? Well, dude, you're always saying really absurd things, right? It'd be like getting a common... <sighs> what is it, then? Oh, <sighs> well, I'm having fun. I guess it has to be this set, set to record the victim from room 8 p.m. for 1 a.m. because that's when he knew the murder was going to happen, but, uh... Take that. Take that. Using tabs on Korea. It wouldn't be like if he didn't present stupid stuff on Psycho. How is, how is this stupid? How is that a stupid uh, play? For real though. Like, I, I think that there are two reasons why he was filming uh, at that time. Is that he wanted to either catch um, Adrian with um, with Juan. Or he was trying to film the murder so he would have like like irrefutable evidence that it wasn't him if it ever came back to him. And I think that having a photograph of, of the crime photo, isn't that a way to communicate because of the murder that happened? Like, I feel like that's that's legitimate. Okay, so am I, am I wrong? This is the problem now. Am I, am I wrong with that? Or is that just the wrong evidence? I just can't, I can't think of another reason why. The photo wasn't taken by the bear though. Yeah, but it still shows the murderer. Like earlier, we had to use this to, to communicate that it, like this costume was in a, a guitar case. All right, so I'm gonna assume that, that this is correct. My line of thought is correct. So would it be, okay. So it wouldn't be any, any of these profiles and it wouldn't be, um, him because we have no idea that, that he's a D killer so 
Like, it could be this because of the D-Killer, right? It could be that. It could be... It could be the autopsy report, right? Because you wanted to see the death, right? Because it was 815, or it could be the camera. I'm gonna guess it's either the camera or the autopsy report. Those are my top two. And then I would go for, I would go this as the third. So let's try. It could also be this. So I, I have like four options. Like autopsy, time is recording. Proof that it was it was the assassin, kind of a link to the assassin. So I'm gonna go autopsy, then card, then camera, then the the transmitter, and we'll see. No, okay. Oh. I had more health. Yeah, but I would have lost all my health in the trial. Because I had to save scum a lot in the last trial. Because the last trial was fucking awkward. Why do you mean presenting evidence into having no health? I don't really. I would have. I would be at zero health, uh, no matter what, from the trials, from the last trial. I just said that. Maybe, maybe with the stream delay. Save in the middle of this. I don't think I can. Okay, so last ones I think fit here are the radio transceiver, the calling card, and this for the time of the camera. But this didn't work with the time, so I don't. I think the camera's out. So let's try the calling card. What was this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly D. Killer, and I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Okay, I think that that was awkward as fuck. But who gives a shit? Let's just keep going. Shelly D. Killer. That's ridiculous. Why would I know some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting all so jumpy all of a sudden? Um, this is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt Ungard, I know why you uh, know Mr. D. Killer. It's because you're a hero of justice. You're his client. You're a star. You're his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew, you knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So how, how would you know something like that? It's because you're his client, that's why. You hired Shelly D. Shelly D. Killer to assassinate Mr. Juan Carita. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is you, Matt Ungard. Sigh, and here I was trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Mr. Ungard, you, you really did hire- Oh, so you, you, you didn't want us to know, so you were keeping it from us, huh? Oh, okay, interesting. Interesting way of uh, phrasing that, Ungard. <sighs> but that's none of my business. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult myself. Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for- Oh, what the hell? Why does it do that, man?
how do you, how do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt on guard. <sighs> Correcio. Have you just been carrying that around, dude? Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really, you, so you are Shelly the Killer's client? You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, did you? Well, what do you mean? And that woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself, trying to stick the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? That's, you're lying. What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera and... A weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrew's secret. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? Uh, a couple dollars, and that's and that's why... Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. That's right, that video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up and I can. Good enough for an answer. F good enough an answer for you, little girl. Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corita? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corita had been able to give it, then mi the Mr. Ungard's secret would have. Ah, uh, well, that w that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know? My secret is that I carry around this huge fucking glass around all the time. And I have the scar on my eye. No one's ever seen it. I keep my hair down all the time. I know interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit, it crept off on me. I'm gonna have to kill the guard after this, and then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's that's how Mr. Karita ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply... Things to be used, used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face, and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it, the assassin too. Oh, and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Oh man. Damn. Everyone working their butts off for me, Matt Ungard. Oh, did that did that leave you speechless? What a shame. Damn, he was hiding a lot from us. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown up awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Carita, and you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I'm an all-star. I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that the was that the killer, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. If I shoot someone, it wasn't me that killed them. It was the bullet. All I'm guilty of is pulling the trigger. Like, hey, it doesn't matter. Like, if I shoot someone and they get rushed to the hospital in the emergency room and the doctor, they don't save him, it's really the doctors that kill him. It's, it's not me. Like, it's the doctor. Like, you killed Mr. Karita. Ha 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 ha. I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Uh, but too bad, you can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? In in cases of someone hiring a hitman to kill someone, is that considered I'm gonna guess like at least accomplice, right? Like in real life. I know we have at least okay, at least ten lawyers in chat right now. Um what what would it be? Conspiracy to murder? Is, is that, like, where would it be? Would it be... It's murder? It's considered murder. I don't... I don't care about the Magatama right now. I'm not talking about the Magatama. I'm just... I'm just talking about this. We're, we're past the, the... The Magatama right now. The Magatama is done and dead. You, you, you... Chat, you can hold on to it if you want, but that's... That's just... You know... There's no fixing that for me. That That's a lost cause. I'm sorry. But I'm talking about actual, like, real-life law. I'm just curious. Legally, it's literal murder. Huh. I wouldn't think it would be like that. Huh. Okay. I think I agree, but I didn't think it would be like that. I thought it would be something else. You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Ah, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. Mystic Maya... 
you wouldn't want to test the killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. Well, he's already broken his word once. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. Y you. Scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. Uh, I'll get you for this. That's such a cliche phrase. Okay, so the one thing I do like about this is that it looks like we're going to have our... This time we're wrong and we have to go through. Cool. All right, I want to see how that comes out, but I don't... Like, we know, so it's not, it's not like it was in, in the end of the that case and... Uh, oh, well, okay. Let's see how it goes. Juan said something just like that, if memory serves. Of course, well, we all knew, we all know how well things turn out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Merry Christmas. Maya, Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now, now you finally found it. Wait, were you just here the whole time? The starting line of this case, Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. I teleported back here, just like I teleport things into the trunk of my car. Well, right. what are you going to do? If you plan on changing your strategy, no, we can't do that. That's right, he's holding Maya hostage. What, what should I do? That's not something I can answer for you, Mr. Chadworth. Right, only you can decide where to go from here. Why don't we go to tell the judge what's going on? And, you know, put on a show, get him declared not guilty, then get Maya back, and then arrest him for this time for hiring an assassin to kill someone, you know, and get him on that technicality. That technically he didn't kill anybody. So then we get away with it and we save Maya, and then we arrest him for that. I, th I think that's a plan. Let's go. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. You must travel through the undercourt. My turn? They need defense attorneys, most of that are not dead. I will protect you. What is that thing called a lawyer? What can, what can you do as one? You can law, you must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. I'm a lawyer, <laughs> but to fight for someone who is clearly a killer. Madame Guard, that man is really arg. It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Absolutely correct. Isn't that the basis of our judicial, judicial system? I can't say that word. Proper defense, but what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? Sigh, ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now? Ugh. Well, well, that may be true, but but that's they're innocent. That's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to to get on guard and acquittal, that that isn't a proper defense at all. I became a lawyer because I thought I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I if I win the case, I can still lose in the end. I just know don't know what to do. Right? Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Okay, so right right here is like... Right? Phoenix doesn't understand like his role here, and I guess that's sort of the point. But at the same time, like... I don't even know if Phoenix went to law school, man. Like, like he, he doesn't know jack shit. He's just like constantly part... And that's part of the charm, is that he's just constantly like... Like, and, and, and hit, when he had amnesia, amnesia in the first trial, it wasn't really that different. You know what I mean? Like, it's always like that. So the fact that he's having trouble reconciling the fact that he might have to defend someone that's guilty, that's true to his character. That makes sense. But it, it does show, like, a deep immaturity um, in how he's going with it. So I, maybe that's the point? I don't know. But yeah, like... Any anyone who's you know they have to prove without a shadow of a doubt. So the defense needs to be strong because the prosecution needs to be even stronger if they are in fact guilty. Because if there's any doubt, they shouldn't they shouldn't convict. But I don't really feel that fits the um, the kangaroo court. But mm, I don't know. Like when the game gets serious for a second, it sort of it sort of feels kind of wrong. But this is all right, I think. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes, we're only human, you and I. 
Oh, you're kind of heroic. You want to save someone. That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That's... You are a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Francesco want well, karma are always using all you can have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict for a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francesca, she fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And isn't that the same as you? Like, what? That, that's long. That ship has sailed. Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed. You are so petty. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What do you? Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a, such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Sorry, I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you'll find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict, uh, verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of the story. Mr. Nick, the transceiver. Be. I'm oh, sorry for what happened earlier. Now then. Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? Hey, just so you know, D-Killer, uh, like, uh, fucking Unguard, like, sold you out, bro, and, uh, he has this footage of you doing it, so I think that maybe me and you should work together. Why don't you hand Maya over to me, and I'll just pin this right on him, and, uh, we can all go free, no problems whatsoever, let's go. My, my, what is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please, why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Unguard's sake? Why are you, why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me. A man who hires an assassin is just as much a kill of a killer himself. I believe you were asking for me for a reason as to why I'm doing what I am. Yeah. This is what I like to call my aftercare. Lots of cuddles. And what the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations, and it is a part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty? We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney, and to ensure that you were you would do everything in your power to the very end. Okay, but uh, the, I, the games can't decide if Phoenix is a good lawyer or not. He's completely undefeated. He's taken down three of the best lawyers in the world, but he still doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, man. Is this what is known as the ludonarrative dissonance in a VN? Well, what is your name? I believe I told you once before. However, you did, but my name is John Doe D. Killer. Shelly D. Killer. You're Shelly D. Killer. Please keep in mind, you do not much have much space to maneuver with me. As a D-killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain, Maya, uh, it would be my duty as an assassin to see it. She receives a nice long nap. Literally, I did not gonna kill her. Nah, no. Now then, if you'll excuse me, if someone were to trace this signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Meow. I recognize that meow. <laughs> Mystic Maya, Mystic, Mystic, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya. I, I don't know what to say. Chadworth. Hmm. Did you hear that? At the end of that transmission. Me. Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. A cat. It can't be that cat, can it? What is it? I think I know where Shelly the Killer is holding my hostage. Chaworth, have all the police units head for Unguard Mansion immediately. Uh, Alright, you hurry over as well then. Alright, here we go. Don't lose hope. <laughs> yeah, Pearls, it's only just you guys. Yeah.
<laughs> Alright, first, hotel lobby. And then... Wait, hold on. I wanna go back to- I wanna go back to the... Hey pal, how's it going? I wanna go and talk to Adrian. Oh, and who's running around to here? Adrian. Okay, do we- Okay, I don't think we have any evidence actually that we can get at Adrian. Alright, let's go back. March 22, unguarded mansion, living room. Merry Christmas. Maya, please answer us, Mystic Maya. We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. All right, so I think this would have been better if um, when he heard the cat, that he has like a, a moment of he's like, oh, wait, the cat. An unguard has a cat. And that man, oh shit, that man looked like the, the the guy who asked Maya to get the phone call. I think I think that would have been better. Cause right now it's just oh a cat. <laughs> as assuming he's still in the area. I can't I can't believe it that Butler all this time he was D killer. He and Unguard were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Why are we the ones in here first? Oh, it's a figurine of a bear, but there are a lot of cuts in it for some reason. Figurine added to the court record, a wooden bear shaped figurine is covered in many thin cuts. A bear, isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Karita? Why would something like this be here? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. My god, right, it's a bomb! Are you sure this, that, that's for, for Shu? Do you think that this came through that little door? Oh, this door. It's locked. A grenade! Quick, I'll smother it with my gigantic hands. They're fine, don't worry. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Chadworth. Slam. 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 Ark, there's no one here. Door's fine, by the way. From the looks of this room, I would say this is Unguard's private lounge. Look at this right. While we, the police, have the place surrounded, we are the, are the fucking invading team. An antennae. For a second. <laughs> for sending and receiving radio signals and the VCR. Check inside the deck. If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but... The tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No. But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. Do they look like smiley faces? Huge television speakers loom largely here. I'm sure if Maya saw this, she'd say, I wish I could watch TV. Happy Samurai TV like this, yeah, that's what she'd say. How am I thinking of this? How am I like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's VCR on an antenna. The footage that the spy camera took at the current scene of the crime was beamed here and recorded on tape. If only we had that tape, it would have been really helpful. Damn. So it was like, like, Shelly just chilling here, just watching all the tapes? It's on guard's computer. Or did Maya take it? Maya, why couldn't you have used this to get help? Mr. Nick. Where, where's the power switch? Oh, I get it. That's that's what happened. She couldn't find the power switch. It's a very small table. I bet we could barely squeeze three pearls on there. But I wouldn't sit on a table to begin with, Mr. Nick. Alright. What a spacious sofa. I bet ten pearls would fit on here. Um, I don't think ten of you would fit, Mr. Nick. I can't read all the labels, but this is a very large collection of videotapes. Looks like Ungard taped all of his own shows. Damn, what a loser. We've searched all over, but it looks like he got away. It looks like he it looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now we've lost our only lead. <laughs> Wait, did did Shelly like he's there and he's like, Alright, you know what you have to do tomorrow, right? And then he's just about to turn it off, and then he hears the meow and he's like, Oh, oh shit! Oh no, fuck fucking cheese it, we gotta bail, they heard the meow. Quick, Maya, fucking get in the car, fucking go, 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 go. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking for you to be her pillar. I hope that there was a, there was at least a, a minute of like of like fucking like consideration. Like, uh, did I hit the button before the, the cat meowed? I don't know. It's probably fine. It'd be really hard to get out of here. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we should probably go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> We're close, I can tell. We're already set up with checkpoints along every route leading out to this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. This looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. We'd love Celeste. Miss Impacts, you mean? Yes, Mr. Karita's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impacts be here in Mr. Ungard's mansion? And why does it say, with love? Hmm, this might be a clue. So let's photo add to the court record. With love. Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? Please let me see that picture frame. Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back, there's something written on the back of the frame. 1103... Maya. It's, Miss, it's Mystic Maya. She left us a message. What? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up, you better get unguard to a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you ever. How long? Like, how small is your writing? I'm fine, so don't you, you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Per yeah, time is the one that's the problem. Pearly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that- oh shit, that's it, okay? Alright, sorry. That's- I- no! I can't believe Maya and Celeste Impacts were having a relationship. Mystic Maya saw... Right. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. We've searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Chadworth. Yes. As far... <laughs> as far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Miss Andrew's psyche lock. If I could just find out what secret she's holding, then I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow to blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Um, thanks, Chatworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. March 22, detention center, visitor's room. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I've come to remove your psyche lock. Psyche... <laughs> You just say it? I want to know, and you will tell me your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. All right. Here you go. What do you think of this? Um, I asked you about this. I told you. I hate trifling matters. All right, cool. All right. Trying to help him. I don't know what you mean. This random half has something of this. Oh shit! There's another one before it, isn't it? Oh no! Oh fuck! 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 Um. God damn it! That was just a mistake. All right. Celeste, there's only one catalyst that could cause such a strong feeling as an even revenge, and that's Miss Impact Suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who's is on, who's is doing that. You're right, you haven't mentioned him yet. If you hate Mungar, I'm going to do some mentioning Mr. Zuzaki, so you're just less than that. Alright, here we go. This, this is a photo of Miss Impacts, correct? Look at this photograph. She looks younger than when she passed away, though. With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impacts' handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ungard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Yeah, we won't need that. It's fine. Why frame him? But it's Celeste that's in the frame. Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Carita didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. Because of Mr. Ungard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at that time. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why. 
With love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. There were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him, even happier than, than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. Okay, you know what I just realized? You know what? You know why I think I prefer and I can connect more with the characters in Danganronpa than this game? Is because... Like, I mean, I, I do have a... I, I feel like I can I can vibe with um, Chadworth and uh, and Gumshoe, even. But not really any of the, the characters that are involved in the cases. Is because it's really hard to, to feel sympathetic to someone when they're constantly making it so fucking difficult to get any information out of them. They're constantly being like, well, no, I'm defensive. And that makes sense, because it's a murder case. And, and they're they're usually um, suspects and shit. Or they're being used by the, the, the prosecutor. But when, in Danganronpa, that happens as well but you also have like more time where you're working together like uh, like communally together and like you have free time events with them and everything like like i don't give a fuck about celeste i just don't care and so this part is like the sad music and everything is like oh this is so tragic it is tragic but i don't i don't care about these characters because like i don't even know celeste you know, I don't know Juan, they were dead before we even got here, and Andrews has made things really super fucking difficult for us, so like, it's it's really hard to care about her. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt, it was revenge for Celeste and for myself. Revenge. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see, so that's what happened. But then why didn't Mr. Corita have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Whoa! Right on. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would have when it would have hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impacts. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind, and in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds, and so that's so that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then, when Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and it would be especially damaging to his ref refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge? There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note, so he called a press conference where he was really important to go as the Nickel Samurai, where he announced this. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... at the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it, because I heard it all from Juan. It was so I could find out all about this that I drew close. It was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night, when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I had even bought a, brought a lighter. But I couldn't find the suicide note, and that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them, bring to them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters, so when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. Eh, he was just meat by then, that's fine. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I am a lawyer. <laughs> I see. What a foul profession. 
Thank you very much for your time and talking with me. No, no, not a foul, foul profession. This is fucking the lie that we've all been sold to, that lawyers are fucking awful and are just part of the system that makes everything really fucking, fucking awful. And, you know, don't, fucking lawyers are scum. Fucking trust, trust the police and all this shit and never go to a lawyer. No, look, the law is fucked up. The law is way too complicated and it should be there for, like, a layman should be able to understand the law. There are big problems with that system. But fuck you, man, like... It's really important for people to have the proper amount of defense against, against the prosecution that just wants to get a conviction no matter what. Like, fuck you and fuck this idea. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. Not specifically the game's fault, by the way. This is something that's all over. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation. Or with what I know, I know now. All right, are we finally in the court now? What? Huff, huff. Grr, how did I get into this mess? <laughs> Chowworth's playing the organ in the background as, as Phoenix monologues. You can't run forever. Work through it, right? Work through it, it's fine. This is what I've been doing all year. <laughs> What? <laughs> I can all of you on like this. <laughs> I'm just a simple defense attorney. Welcome to the undercourt. Here we go. You are no longer worthy of your title. Everyone here is is considered uh, guilty until proven innocent. But that's no different than kangaroo court. Oh, oh shit. I've had this dream before, someplace, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. March 23, 9.43 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Beep. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? <laughs> it's so fucking bad. <laughs> it's so Oh, ridiculous! <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. All right. So uh, before we get into the into the um, the courtroom drama, I think there's some uh, some fan art. So let's look at some fan art, and then we will. Uh... We'll get into the court. Okay, first one is from Mabig. <laughs> Wait, sprinklers sprinklers is the baseline now? Really? Sprinklers is where we start. We start at sprinklers. Oh my god. Where's this going? If we start Dart at sprinklers. Like, holy shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's. Oh. 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 So. Oh. <laughs> Return to monkey. <laughs> Damn, look at all the expressions. Those are excellent. Thank you, Mabig. Those are excellent. I do want to point out that 
uh, just in case anyone doesn't know about Last of Us 2. I don't actually dislike Last of Us 2 Part 2 uh, anywhere close to that much. It, it, it's funny, but yeah, I just want to... A milestone in video game history. Yeah. Monkey. It's a rock solid 6 out of 10. This one is called The Maya Escape Caper. Alright, here we go. Alright, I'm out. Is that a secret of Yaya in the in the TV there? Sneak. <laughs> With the card too, nice. Oh, a computer. This is perfect. I know exactly what to do. She's gonna escape, here we go. You've got that that wrong chat. This game is a murder mystery. Bog champ, ayaya bobbers. He knows ew. Who is ayaya ayaya? When will you play? And she's typing ayaya. <laughs> Bobber. Uh, thank you, Zerstorin HV. Thank you. I should just say Zerstorin. I don't need the HV, right? Or do you want the HV? You can let me know. And I'll try and remember. Fucking bobbers. What would bobbers even be? Oh, fuck. <laughs> this one's for Merrick. <laughs> How did you make this so fast? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> do, 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 do. <sighs> what have we become? We've been this for a while, man. We've been this for a while. Thank you, Mythen665, for the 5 and 3 sub. Thank you very much. Thank you, VRUM, or VRUM32, for the new sub. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Raphael Ambrosius Costu used a bit to say, In guard, you dumb fuck, there's a camera and a guard in the same room. You tell us your secret plans for. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say that. I don't. I, I think we're fighting a little too much today. I've been really I've been really careful about picking my battles with the insane bullshit in, in the this game for two reasons. One, it's just not worth it to fight with, fight with Chad about most things. But also, like... When I bring things up, it's not always meant to be a big fucking battleground back and forth. It's just something like, I don't like that, and I'm gonna say it, and then we're gonna move on. So I just mean like, eh, it's not really worth it, you know what I mean? But, like, there's been a lot of, um, stuff in this, in this case that, uh, I'm not really all that thrilled about. But, um, I think it's still probably maybe the, the best mystery of what's going on? Like, uh, I don't know. I, I really liked the last case in, um, the first game. No, not the last case, 1-4 uh, in the first game, but not for the mystery. So, yeah, I think this might be the best mystery, not sure. I say Spaceman used 100 bits to say uh, the judge, but if Ungard hired an assassin, he didn't kill anyone. That's fine by me. Innocent, which I could read, yeah, <laughs> bring the assassin. I think he would go with that. Uh, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, Rathian or Rith Rithian? I think Rithian. Rithian has subscribed for the first time. Welcome, Rithian. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. And Pumpkin Starfish used 235 bits to say the trope for Phoenix's form of lunar dissonance is called the idiot ball. It's a metaphorical ball that turns whoever is holding it into an idiot. It gets passed around the characters of every single anime manga. It's part of why all anime is a dumpster fire. Play Sun Sunwave. Sunwave? What's Sunwave? Huh, what? what? What, what could that mean? I think the idiot ball goes well beyond anime. I think in this game, like, Phoenix never drops the idiot ball. I think there are multiple idiot balls um, uh, in, in this one. Yeah, I like the idea of the idiot ball, actually. Wasn't there a famous um, TV producer that spoke about the idiot ball for the TV for some shows that were making it sometime? Who's going to hold the idiot ball this week, I think? Hmm. Uh, Jason Kim has resubscribed for, for 32 months. Thank you very much, Jason Kim. Thank you, thank you. 
I almost said 23 because it flipped in my in my eyes there. Thank you very much. Uh, Dirk Sheed, Dirk Dirk Sheed, every single time. Dirk Dirk Shade, every single fucking time. I see your name multiple ways. Use 100 bits to say. Meant to say thanks for the Among Us games the other week. Gotten to hang out with people on Discord after years of lurking too, which is nice. Still shocked we got away with that in imposter way. Yeah. <laughs> Joe learned how to bluff a little bit, so uh, that was fun. Yeah, I had a good time. I'd like to do it again, but uh, I've been like really busy and on a on an earlier schedule lately, so I can't I can't um, uh, I can't manage it yet. I haven't even managed to play any more Hunt Showdown with Weeaboo Bill lately either. I feel bad about that. Parker Starfish used 650 bits. You've given a, a, a lot of bits and, and gifted subs lately, Parker Starfish. Thanks so much. I want to say thanks for tolerating my ship posting. You are a good Canadian boy and a lot of other streamers would, would take advantage. It's really nice to be able to be myself without having having to worry. Play Star, o Star Ocean. Well, you don't have to give so many bits for, for messages, Parker Starfish. It's fine. Like, like don't feel like... Uh, like, you, you have to give, like, hundreds and hundreds every single time. It's fine. Look at the dancing. You have a budget you're not gone over? Okay. Know your limit bit within it. Alright, let's go. Haha, <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Grr. Oh yeah, our friend, Maya. Now listen up, you better get unguard guilty of sen a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime ball not guilty, I'll never forgive you ever, because I'll be dead, Maya. Phoenix, Phoenix. Me... Uh, Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. You don't know. She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. But, but, you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. No, it's Shadworth. Beep. Will you leave me alone? Look, I don't call me anymore. I mean it. Right, calm down. Oh, it's Gumshoe. You're really mean, pal. Ah, Gumshoe. I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? What does that word mean, pal? Sorry? No one's ever said it to me before. They let me join the investigation team and we're chasing after D-Killer, pal. Then, you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not going to give up, Gumshoe. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're going to do everything we can and find D-Killer. If we can get Maya out, then you can get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true, I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that, so you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer. If you go at Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Chadworth, everything you've got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. Why didn't? Why don't we tell Chadworth that? He would be fine with that. He would do that. Let's tell Chadworth. Why? Why? Why is it a secret plan? Just bring him in. Just tell him. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Chadworth can do it. Okay. So why? Why the fuck? Are we like um like uh? I think if if we find Maya before this. Before it goes on, I think that would kind of ruin it. So, believe in us. We're going to give it all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Yeah. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. Is there any anime that doesn't have the power of friendship being the number one? March 23, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is on session for the trial of Matt Ungard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready. Wait, hold on. Let me tie my shoe. The defense is is. Wait, Judge, did you get a haircut? Oh, I did. Thank you so much. You want to talk about it? Yes, I did. The, the Prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. 
Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? This is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Shadworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence and th that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard, and then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm, then you're saying that she is guilty after all. I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. Hmm, what is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. Assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Corrido was killed by a professional assassin, Leon the Professional, and the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt Ungard. What a surprising turn of events. I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time. So I know what everything at Chadwick has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least until Maya is safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Oh, now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Chadworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Okay, I'm a uh, Will Powers. Uh, thank you, Chelsea Stan, for 200 bits. Please, Joe, get this beautiful abomination off my screen. Merrick, why do you have to be so good on the wrong side? <laughs> Merrick's on the wrong side of justice. Ralph, I was using bits to say, wait, you don't have to give hundreds every time? Exactly, yeah, I know. I, I read almost every bit message. Sometimes even the one bit ones. Maybe I shouldn't. Uh, Aluminium has resubscribed for 13 months. Thank you very much, Aluminium. Very funny name. I like it very much. Thank you. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Powers, please! You don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Yes. Um, but, you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ungard's room. Okay, sure. Are we really not telling Chadworth that we're drawing this out? Really? After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in the, his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Powers' testimony. And talking with the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the, pers that the person Mr. Ungard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy, what are you implying? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? For us to find out more, we're just going to have to charge in head first, right? Visit to Matt's room. The defendant's room, why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother, sort of, and I want to say congrats. What's wrong? Why did you stop? Mr. Wright, what is it? You, you're going to try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I, I know I'm just a poor, underpaid action star, but, but I, I'm not the killer. Um, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Well, this is true. Every time. Witness. I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. 
So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. And if you do, you'll get a stick of gum. Oh, okay. Sounds good to me. Sorry. Can't wait to get that gum. Hmm. When do I get some gum? So you... <laughs> So you went to the defendant's room, and then... Hey, wait a minute. When, did, when and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? Are you sure that was Matt Uncle? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai mask then. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. Oh, and... What was the defendant doing, standing in front of his own room? He was talking to someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboy-ish uniform and he had a bottle of juice on a tray. <gasps> the juice! Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? Uh, how am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm going to have to wait patiently on this one. Oh, yeah. Not sus at all. All right, fine. That's fine. Yeah, you don't have to remember right now. It's cool. Don't worry. We have all the time in the world. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? But that's a perfectly normal thing to do. Oh, so, how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. I guess with me, they could, I, I couldn't, couldn't make them work for me. Uh, so, who are these guests you're talking about? Uh, fucking you. You guys, of course. You and Maya and Little Pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So, I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. What do you mean? He's fine! Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her, in her hyper state. I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. After the awards ceremony, I went by myself. Th Wait, what What kind of contradiction? What? what? What fucking contradiction are we doing here? After the awards ceremony, I went by myself in the Mets room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, selling this Nickel Samurai costume. Okay. He was talking with someone at first that was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night. I couldn't make them wait for me. Okay, I, I don't, I don't, what? I don't see anything really wrong with this. Aren't we just stalling for time? Um, sorry, I thought that we were just gonna go to the conversation after this. I didn't think we were gonna, I didn't think we were gonna have to, um, uh, whatchamacallit. I didn't think we were going to, uh, contradict anything here. Okay, what did I miss? The fence room, why did you go there? Oh, the mentor, blah, 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 would you stop? Mr. Wright, yeah, we did this already, okay. It was because Matt, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip giving incident itself? Ah, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. Oh, Mr. Atworth. Yes, Your Honor. This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Oh, very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. So you gave the bellboy a tip, what's so strange about that? Uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. 
how much it was. But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket, and that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I don't follow at all. I suddenly missed the powers of surprise twice by this event. I wonder which of the shocking moments I should ask about. Uh, both of them, on guard, on guard's tip. The defendant is a huge star, and you can afford to give us generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. But giving him that much, I was a little too much, I think. A little too much. Would you please clarify for the court about how much you would say the defendant gave to the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. Hmm, why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash? Uh, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor, but it wouldn't look that big in my gigantic hands. It would look like just a small roll of cash. Hmm, they're just beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Raise an objection. Wait and see. There's nothing I can really object to here. I mean, who can argue that a fat roll of money isn't really odd? Uh huh. So supposing that roll of cash was on a tip, then what was it? Payment, Your Honor. Payment. Isn't it obvious for the murder of Mr. Juan Corita? Then. Then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses down, Mr. Chatworth. You don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? Uh, a couple times. I have here the card Shelley the Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley the Killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelley the Killer. Really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head, and I think I just figured something out. Oh, oh. actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? <laughs> Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom, and that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Carita's room. Now I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean, t okay. Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. D. Killer, then we shall see. Uh -huh. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain, to entertain and make us laugh. Ha, 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 ha. This is no laughing matter. What time is it? Ah, uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8 p.m., right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that. And then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8, 10 p.m. by that time. You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? So sorry. I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah, and how could you tell? All the, all the bear boys wore the same uniform after all. But you see, well, he had those stitches in his face. Oh, really? So you know the stitches, but Phoenix didn't. Okay, cool. Erk. Phoenix, you fucking moron. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Mm -hmm. So which room did the bell boy come out of? Oh, wait, hold on. So, so like, I don't think that D-Killer would have known that that we were onto him through meeting Unguard, unless they they were communicating in some way, but I don't think so, but maybe? So, like, we went to the house and saw his face again, like his, and yet the cat, the cat meowing is what set him off. Oh shit, they're gonna make that connection with the cat. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Carita's room. Room, huh? 
Yeah, the one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's room, all right. Come, kind of becoming goofy. Words cannot, words cannot describe how screwed I am. Oh, let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insepid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's going to say next. Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Uh oh, I agree. That is a little bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers test my slide or uh, try to pull a fast one? There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. Damn. Now, now this is a stream argument. If you two are done being school children, bellboys are first for room service. There is no reason for them to be empty-handed ever. What if he just brought him a towel? He brought him a hot towel, and then he just left. Oh, you have your towel, sir? Great. I'll be leaving now, and I won't be taking the towel with me because I brought it to you and I left it. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Grr, Chadworth, are you going to do whatever you can make the bellboy look suspicious? I see, very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Miss Bowers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Yes, sir. I thought it was kind of strange the bellboy to come out of the guest room. He handed. So you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy, he was holding a tray in his hand, and there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. If we could come up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty handed, I think some sort of proof, then I think we can dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. Yeah, so he had to be assassin, I'm sure of it. Please don't be so quick to judge. Oh, well, what are we talking about? Why are you bringing me this? into this? Uh, but it's kind of a Powers family thing. Think of every person as a thief. <laughs> well, I guess thief and assassin are both sneaky and silent. That's not the point, Phoenix. In any case, if that, bell, if that bellboy was the assassin, it would be very bad for us. But he really is the assassin, you know. Yes, but can't give in yet if you want to prolong this trial for as long as possible you're going to have to pull some cheap tricks on this one man this doesn't this just doesn't hit as hard as when chadworth and von karma pulled this bullshit because they have selfish reasons for doing it whereas we want to save someone's life i mean i guess you could argue you want maya to, to, to live for selfish reasons but eh, that doesn't really that doesn't really fly all right so we have to prove that there was a reason why he would uh be empty handed is there a tray okay the tray is here right he left the tray i think that's it right Mr. Powers. Yes. You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... Oh, I didn't know I was saying stitches. So, a baseball has stitches. I... Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Gall. Well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There's a wine glass sitting next to, the, to Mr. Korea's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at the what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here, Anyone can clearly see that it was is it a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corita's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ah, but, 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 but that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. 
that. But can you prove that Mr. Crater was already dead at that time? Uh, uh Mr. Chatterworth, I I'm not on trial here. Mr. Chatterworth, yes. I, I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing that you would like to share with us? Uh, is there? The bellboy was empty. The bellboy was empty-handed, or should I say, empty-handed? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. He doesn't have any. Huh? What? That bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Uh, boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Does it? All right, got to focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Riot. That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So a football is made of leather. Oh, we just you can do this for everything, right? <laughs> are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they are made of leather? Gulp. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And footballs are pretty sus. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Erg. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. And Adrian never saw or heard this? Wasn't she in the room at some point? Or was she setting up at that point? It's very unclear about the timeline of what some of these characters were doing. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room. Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Maybe he was, in fact, a uh, bellman. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Let's go. After leaving one's room. So you saw why you were busy spying? Excuse, excuse me. I may be a poor, underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is, where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, I'm um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye in a sort of sneaky spy light. <laughs> I knew he was spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over, over or underhandedly? What did the bobby do next? That's all I care to know. Yeah, you really care if something is done under or overhandedly, right? He gave something to the person inside the room. I said, hold it. Um, okay. That's better. I am. What kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm. I should probably ask him one question at a time. Ask about the person inside. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Uh, only an arm? Well, was it a robotic arm, or then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, was it Mr. Ungard's room? It was Mr. Ungard's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. Ungard himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? Ha ha ha. I don't know. If I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? Hmm, that's very true. But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. Oh, I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Oh, Mr. Shadworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think it is of, of the utmost importance. 
This is where wh this is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm, Miss Bowers, please try to remember what it was the bill was handed off. Um, well, let's see. Um, I think it was no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. So again, I can see for sure. Wooden statue. It was the thinker. A statue. It kind of looked like one. I got. All right. So is this? Does this have the um, the suicide letter in it? If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember. You know. Looks like for this trial to proceed. I'm going to have to come up with whatever the statue thing is and show it to him. You don't have to trust your instinct on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, almost well, powers, let's continue your testimony. What did the bubble do after that? And the old guy just left without going into the room. Where did this bubble go after he left Mr. Rongard's room? Mm, he opened the door to Viola Hall, went in there, and who knows after that, right? Uh, I do. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. See anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary that time? Oh yeah, I saw that one thing. What? You saw something else? There was this jittery alien with a ray gun. It was watching Juan's door like some sort of stalker. Um, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Power's testimony just now was just as vague as his first. It's a little troublesome, isn't it? I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clearer. Although that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Uh, can I talk about a lose-lose situation. Okay, but we're not supposed to press anymore. We're supposed to um, do present the statue, right? I'm guessing it was it this. What was the point of that pregnant pause? We're stalling, Chadworth! You just stalled a little bit too by doing the recap! Chadworth! Where, where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. I know that, that you saying that is also kind of dragging it out a little bit too, but now you're calling attention to it! Chadworth! You're so bad at it! Oh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Oh, um, it's right. If you have something to say, please put it out. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, there's something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Ma Matt Ungard's mansion. The, the defendant's house. What the fuck were you doing there? Wait, what's going on? What does this mean? Who fucking knows? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelly the killer assassinated Juan Cor Corita in his room, and then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. It's a memento. Then the bear being found at Mr. Ungar's mansion would mean. It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Ungard is the killer's client. How did it get there? He goes in, kills kills uh, Karita, takes the bear, gives it to Matt Ungard, then takes Maya, go goes to takes Maya to the house. Ungard is arrested for for murder. The cops crawling all over the place. He, did he he snuck back in and got the bear out of? The room and no one did like an evidence check for it or anything like that. Like I don't. How did it get to the mansion? Okay. Order, order, order. I said order. That's right. This is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Chatterworth would have. I uh, almost forgot that he knew about it too. Uh -huh. I think it is clear that there is no need, no need for us to continue this trial. I, I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. 
there are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Uh, the person who received the bear. The bear itself. All right, uh, let's go with the bear itself. Let's talk about this fucking bear. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. I agree. I agree. I agree. The bear, Mr. Wright. This was found at Mr. Ungar's mansion. However, Mr. Ungar was arrested at the hotel that night, which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, ooh, where we go? Yeah, right, yeah, ooh, yeah, where? How, how the fuck get there? Yeah, uh, oh. I think your honor I had or, has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that, this, that it was Mr. Ungar who took the spirit to his mansion. Why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Phew. Disaster averted. Ha 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 ha. Fuck my Athena. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. Hmm. I wish you guys would stop flirting so much. Wish someone flirt with me. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ungard's mansion. I'm just gonna put this bear here and pretend we found it. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was D-Killer. D-Killer and Ungard were working together, so to speak. And D-Killer was hiding at Un Ungard Mansion as its butler. Oh, oh, what a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Ungard Mansion by D-Killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested... Unguard made him made had made had him do so. What? So where was Maya? Uh, okay. I assume because it would have been bad. It would have been bad had the police found during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to... I plan to expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Powers' testimony. What? Is there still another one? There is indeed, Your Honor, and it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Uh, the person who received the bear. Yep. There was one thing in Mr. Powers' testimony that was very unclear, and that is the identity of the person who received the bear. <clears throat> he gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. Oh. What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a re re good reason why. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Oh, really? I mean, I only saw his arm, but, but the arm. It was the nickel samurai's arm. I swear it. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the nickel samurai. But Andrews was dressed up as the Nickel Samurai. Order, order. It looks like you've dug your own grave. Yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt, Sa Matt Ungard is the Nickel Samurai. That's the defense. We've made that all clearer. All the clearer. No, I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Matt, Mr. Matt Ungard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all... What Chadworth, what Chadworth has stated is the truth. Go out and punch him. Force a mistrial. Never knew. Told you life was going to be this way. Just, just you know, just, just fucking just take a shit in the middle of the courtroom. 
oh, clear the room, clear it, like anything to just just prolong this. Like, what are we doing? It's fucking saving someone's life. Let's just go. Just any last objections, Mr. Right? Well, do I? What should I do? Uh, raise an objection. objection. There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is is one this one dirty trick. Smash the fucking statue. Just throw it on the floor, Your Honor. Right now, we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Sorry, my client is the assassin's client? Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at the Ungar mansion. However, it's possible that there are, that it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. Well, the real client. Yes. Tisk tisk, is this all you have? Okay, does he not know we're trying to drag it out? Ch Chadworth, what the fuck are you doing? And now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say the killer is a real client and therefore the real murderer? Okay, it has to be Adrian because if we say it's Adrian, then she was the one that was wearing the suit, right? Adrian Andrews. Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Ugh. Then, then the nickel samurai's arm that I saw, that could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. Ungard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony, the defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Ungard's mansion, it was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Shatworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic, because they're zero, besides which there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Mm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable that he would try to do his job. It's not something petty, it's murder of all things. That this is to save Maya, this is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Again, I feel like this isn't this isn't the same thing. Like he has good reasons to do this. He's being blackmailed into, into being fucking Chowworth and Von Karma and what they've done in so many cases. Order, order, order. All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. This is reasonable doubt. His, his what-if game, Mr. Chadworth. The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even if you have thought it's, str it's, it's strange and, and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? I didn't read that properly, I'm sorry. He's right. The killer did specially uh, bring that bear to unguard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Mr. Andrews. When I when I theorized this yesterday, I thought what was going to happen is that during the back and forth, because that's what happened in the in the in the first game's case, is that Chadworth realizes halfway through the case that oh shit, I'm wrong. It's not who I'm prosecuting. Right is right, and then he's on our side, and it's like okay, shit, here we go. So like I feel like. The, the, what I wanted out of this one was that halfway through this, Phoenix realizes, oh fuck, my guy's guilty. Oh shit. Well, do I do I continue with what I'm doing, or do I do what Chadworth did last time and go for 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 truth and, and actually get the right person um, like guilty here, even though it's going to cost me? Like that would be interesting and in watching what's going on right now. Instead, it's just kind of being being forced a bit. Like it's still not bad by any means, but it's less interesting than I thought it was going to be. Prosecution calls upon a, upon a witness to clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. Oh, she's coming back. Hmm, I see. Well then, 
The court will take a short time in a recess. Oh, nice. Make it 15 minutes. The prosecution will repair its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. March 23, 11.54 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Ha 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 ha. All I knew was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Uh, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick, Pearls, where's Mia? I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. A really strong power. Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is. It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Phew, that's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? I figured out where the, the killer and Maya are. Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but what? We don't have any more time. If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come to this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's being rescued. But if I just run out of luck this time, is all our hope for naught. A tent. Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. Mia. It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in, in a dusty little room right now, but I could see a circus tent outside the window, about 300 feet away. Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Maya is somewhere within a 300 foot radius of the main tent. What? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map, about 300 foot radius from the main tent, hurry! And, and, I could see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Where? You want me to mail something for you, pal? Okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window, I couldn't see anything else. It felt like it was in an old office building, maybe the third floor or so. I heard her, an old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later. So don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Beep. Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Don't you? Please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. March 23, 12.05 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court will not reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. What the fuck is it? Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. Not with me. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You've seen it before. That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? Alright. <laughs> why, why does she... Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. Oh, that's what the 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 um the lines are for on it? The cuts on it for? That's interesting. At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item, like a suicide note. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Do, do, do. Hmm, so it's figurine. It's a container of sorts, is it? Yes, but looks can be deceiving. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Hmm, I'm gonna take this. It's mine. I made this. Court is adjourned. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really was something to that bear after all. The bear figuring. Actually, this is not a bit puzzle. Solve it for us. A puzzle. That's right. Hmm, but it looks like an ordinary figurine. Judge dot dot dot. True enough, to people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess this was a puzzle. So it, what kind of puzzle is this exactly? So you can take it apart, and how would, would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh, oh, yes, I see! After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, 
Uh, this is most interesting. Looks like I'm killing it. The boy and his new toy, it's like he's five all over again. Nah, it's not broken yet. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So, what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? The meaning of life. And it's certain. It's under small enough carry the small item. Do, 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 do. And how'd you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this, this was a present from you. That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be a per it would be perfect for Juan. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Good stalling, Chadworth. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland, so I doubt there are, doubt there are that many people with the same bear in this country. Oh, but this looks like it can be easily broken, especially if someone wanted to get away get at what it's, what's inside. Well, there's a little bit of explosive in there that if uh, if it's tampered with, it, it just blows up and c it destroys anything inside. Well, it's a toy, but it can never be the same once again once it's been broken. You really can't tell. It's a small jewelry box. Just by looking at it. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Ungar didn't know, right? I like hidden things like that. This is all I'm going to get for now. Figurine updated to the court record. Well, can we get her to open it, please? No, we're, we're not? Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Now that we've agreed to this point, there's only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? Yeah, let's open it, open it, what's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next, witness. Yes. You are the only one who can open this. Please, no. There's a painful silence something like that. All eyes on Miss Andrews as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. Click. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a no. Eat it. Eat it quick. Just eat it. Adrian, eat it. I don't think we need to guess at what it is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. Suicide note. Chadworth. Like, I didn't know didn't know that was gonna happen. I'll miss you. The suicide note left by Juan Corita's former manager, Celeste Impacts. Oh, that makes more sense. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Corita himself. It seems Celeste Impacts had very beautiful handwriting. And she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order! Witness! Did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public, but I couldn't find it anywhere because it had already been taken by D. Killer. It's so ridiculous that his name is D Killer. Fucking hell, man. Everything is going at Mr. Chadworth's face. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right, at least that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. What? I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it, and I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. I can't do that, Chatterworth. You know that. Very well. <clears throat> Wish I could read. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste and Pax left us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by on guard. About being engaged to Karita and Ungard's role in destroying that, and about how she decided, in her despair, to end it all. 
and it really came through as we were doing it that this reveal of Ungard's what Ungard did to her would only have impact and make sense if it was delivered by someone wearing a nickel samurai costume at a fake press conference. That is the only way that it could have done any damage to him. That would have made it more effective. And that's all Miss Impact said to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Ungard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. Oh my word! Matt Ungard values above all else that his refreshing like a spring breeze image. <laughs> this is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. So let's do a side note added to the court record. It's Ungard's fault that the woman killed herself, and this time he even went as far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible. What a selfish person. I guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who will defend these creeps too. <laughs> there is no room for doubt here. Mr. D. Killer's client. Client's goal was to obtain the suicide note. Found if you mean. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the, with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. Let's also ignore that Miss Adrian just said on the stand that she never ever wanted the contents of this note to ever come out. Ever, 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 ever. That is motive too, but no, let's just ignore it. It seems that we've come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Right, how could you? Uh, how am I supposed to escape from this one? What well, hesitation, Phoenix. Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know, I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of the situation through one of those. The gavel is already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry. Eh, it's always in his hand. The suicide note or the figurine. Which one of these should I pursue? I'm surprised he hasn't accidentally hit it at some point in the trial. He's just fucking fidgeting with it. Um, suicide note. Please wait, Your Honor. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it? It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think Your Honor believes that Matt Ungard killed in order to obtain this note. Yes, that's correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Karita until the night of the murder. If that is the case, I say that Mun Ungard could not have known what that was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, it does make. Yeah, good job, Phoenix. Yeah, this makes sense. Actually, I did not. I did think of it that. Exactly, but I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. And the guy. Oh, yeah, it's a good point. You know, order, order, order. See, he's doing his job. You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Chadworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Uh-huh. The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It's a very small video camera, your your, your honor, but it's very high, very high resolution. It can see through bears, and you can read the note on it. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. Matt Ungard and the victim both thought of of the, of the other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And? The victim, Han Karita, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt Ungard. The note was in a bear, Chadworth. Order, order, I have Mr. Like, he's actually guilty, and this is really shit. <laughs> yes, your honor. You, don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Chadworth's done way more shit than this. 
sort of is not acceptable. Answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Don't choose Bug Sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Madame Guard's fingerprints were on there. Well, Phoenix, it looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ungard learned of the suicide note through this. What kind of space age cameras are these? It makes perfect sense that at some point where a camera was hidden, that Karita would have taken the note out of his secret fucking bear fucking puzzle box, held it up to the camera, and then looked at it and gone, yes, time for my nightly inspection of the suicide note that I keep in this hidden fucking bear that only two people know how to open. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now, now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Shush, stop, don't look at him. <laughs> the way he's sweating is just so ew, nasty. Phoenix, yes, Chief, have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What am I going to do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Chatterworth is very close to putting the lid on this case, but in his eagerness to prove his point, he just, he forgot one very important thing. What is it, Mia? He forgot about Dre, Phoenix. There is a piece of evidence. <laughs> he really should investigate. Something he should investigate. I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when, we, when he had the chance. Why are you, why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Nah, she always does that. All right, I guess it's time to finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Maya's talking about? Can I figure out what it is that needs to be looked at before I look at it? It's present evidence, yeah, it's present evidence. Yeah, sure, why not? I have an objection, Your Honor. Humph, that was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Ah, it's our turn, nice, flipping it back around. Aw, oh, man. Like this is fine, but it's still a bit disappointing compared to what to, to to what I thought this could be. Fuck, man. Oh well. Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Shadworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something? You're so close, Mr. Shadworth. All right, but there's something you really should have examined about this piece of evidence. Uh, I I don't know. There has to be something new, right? The camera, where where the camera transmitter went. Cause we were just talking about the camera, right? Where where the suicide note went? Something about the suicide note? Something about the bear? I don't think it's the bear. Uh, the the photo that we got? No, I don't think so. It's either the note or the camera. Where the camera goes? Fuck, man. Camera or trans transmitter? Let's try. Let's try camera. Oh, well, Mr. Chatworth. Yes, I do believe some special examination is needed, but I think the item should be examined. This is a defenseless gray matter. <sighs> Whoops. That's right. After this trial is over, I would like to see you in my chambers. I think there are a few things we need to discuss. Oh shit. Yes, Your Honor. Humph, if you're going to speak, at least make your use your brain to make up something intelligible. So you're telling me that I forgot something. You're so close to Mr. Chadworth. This is usually a piece of evidence, okay. Something, something about the suicide note? Take that. that is, this impacts the suicide note, right? Okay, is it like it could be a forgery or, or what? Hmm, who knows? 
I mean, sure, the suicide note was found inside this bear, but this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago, which means the handwriting on the suicide note is yet to be analyzed. Okay, that's a good point, but I thought the way that Chatworth presented it was that it's her handwriting for sure, but I guess that was just him, like, forcing the issue. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, so as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not, that has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting. Mr. Wright, you, are you saying the suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, it could be a fake. You were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Ungard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? How dare you? Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. The witness that has repeatedly lied on the stand. There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Ah. Miss Andrews. You wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame that Angard. I, I did no such thing. Did I? Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Chadworth, you were the one who presented the scrap of paper as evidence, so you have to prove its legitimacy. That means the burden of proof lies w with you, the prosecution, and this is the only time we're ever going to say something like this. Ugh. That's enough. Mr. Chadworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? It is as the defense has stated. The handwriting has yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, we're passe. It seems that yet again we have reached a point where the ver or verdict is impossible. Im impos? That's impossible. This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. Oh god, I hope not. I don't think Phoenix and Maya will be physically able to make it another day. What do you mean? Oh yeah, because we want it, it wanted to be... Um, uh, not guilty yet. I didn't want to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Handwriting analysis, my butt. That's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. Unguard is guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty. 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 It's like fucking the Chrono Trigger. Okay, great. Alright, yeah, alright. So this is just a train wreck. What the hell? What is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe. Sai. What is with him? And what's with that Sai? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, he, uh... Phoenix, what the fuck are you doing? What is that thing next to your ear? He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm going to keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But don't tell me we don't. Don't we don't have any more? How is this still going? Guilty. 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 <sighs> Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't for us to come this far and... Oh. What is it? Let me talk to Mr. Shadworth. I can't do that. That's right. Would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Chowworth, catch. <laughs> Mr. Chadworth. Please, you've got to buy some more time. Court is in session. Beep. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying... Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I'm reluctant to do this. However, it appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. This time I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. Chadworth? What is it, Mr. Chadworth? 
I humbly request another 30 minutes of your honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of paper, piece of evidence in that time. Hmm, but can you really obtain results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, your honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn for, for today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes, please, your honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, your honor. Very well. I will go along with this. As the prosecutor's request... Sorry, as, at the prosecution's request, this court, this court will not take a 30-minute recess. But be advised that it will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. I feel like this problem could be solved with a conversation. Doesn't doesn't Ch didn't Chatworth have like a task force out there trying to find Maya? There's another one like going out, the, and the judge is the only being kept in the dark. This is this is really contrived to me. March 23. Right. Well, what's going on with Maya's situation? D Killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes, we can't find her in that time. Uh, da, 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 da. Re report. Uh, is that Mr. Chadworth? We don't have time, just spit it out. Right, it looks like we just missed him, sir. But D Killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. Here, they're now in your evidence log. A few things. Can we use any of them as evidence? Oh ho ho, I thought you'd ask, pal. I've got the things he left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I swept the stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I've got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. With my hunk of junk car, I'll say I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. I'm also talking while I'm driving. Alright, just get here in one piece. Oh, is that a reference to One Piece? I'm on a mission, and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. All right, so we're so we're willing to steal evidence from a crime scene. We're willing to just like go. Uh, I presume an, an illegal task force hunting after some some D killer person or saving some girl, surrounding a house as well. But we're not willing to go to the judge and say, "Look, this is what's going on. Can we just please give him not guilty, get the girl back, and then charge him for something else?" I'm, I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light. That's even, wow. Okay, we're doing that too. I was left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. Oh shit, earthquake. One karma made an earthquake. Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. No one can stop What happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? Was there a meow at the end of the, of the phone call? We've got to hurry and call for help. But we have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Quickly, we have to go and get there, get to there before the police do, instead of going and talking to the judge. Well, if there's a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Why, oh why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is in this moment? There is a way, there is no way. Uh, no, there's no way. Ah, uh, it's no use, I can think of anything. I see, all right, I'll try to think of something on my end. To the prosecutor helicopter! You have to understand, right, that the prosecutor's office, it's kind of like fucking Paw Patrol Tower. We have all these gadgets and vehicles and shit. I have a submarine, I don't care. <laughs> Don't get your hopes up too high, but I'll try my best. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? Chadworth, what is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty, but what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using evidence to do this. Yeah, but you're doing it to save a life. We can retcon it afterwards, Phoenix. This is, this is no, there's no, there's no struggle here. There's no fucking moral conundrum. Fucking hell, it might be my turn to say, defense attorney Phoenix, right, chooses to, when, when they're found guilty, it's not like the judge drags them behind the courtroom and takes them to a fucking guillotine and kills them. Right, it doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after after the verdict has been decided. The, the verdict? Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. 
They're probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. March 23, 2.35 p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Court will not reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> if the handwriting analysis actually came back fake, it, it, it wasn't her. <laughs> I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Chatterworth? I, that is, it's nothing, Your Honor. <laughs> What's wrong with Chadworth? Looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Well, now then, Mr. Chadworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Mr. Impact's suicide note. Y yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that the suicide note is a. What? What? What do you mean, Mr. Chadworth? This this note was not written by Miss Impact herself. It is it is a fake. Eh? Is he- is he a fake? Are we- it, What? Order, 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 Mr. Chatworth, would you care to explain what's going on? What? This is not Mr. by Mr. Nearby, then who, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however, it appears that the handwriting matches that one of the victim, Mr. Juan Carita. Uh, Mr. Carita? Well, well, it looks like Miss Impact's never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about Ungar. However, Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ungard could not have known that, and so that Marine's facts are shape, that is actually true. If, if we assume the bullshit he saw on one of his cameras, acting under the assumption that it was real, he had to plot it to possess this real, sorry. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. This theory that Ungard had no idea that the suicide note was a fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Present evidence. No, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, no, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, back down. Yeah, back down. It's no use. Something feels wrong, but I can't quite figure out what it is. Hmm, well, actually, there's something I would like to ask. Mr. Chadworth, you had stated something earlier to the effect that the defendant had spied on Miss Carita's private life. I believe this would mean that he would have known about the note as well. Th that's it. Yes, and so naturally, this means Mr. Ungar would have known that the note was a fake. Wh so... What? I'm sorry. Are we just, like, we're just assuming that because he had a spy camera that every single moment of his life was just, like, on guard? Just, like, like, what? It was, like, big fucking brother? Uh, like, he knew everything? Order, order. See here, Mr. Wright. Um, yes, Your Honor. I was the one who thought of the spying thing. Jumping in and stealing my thunder like that is simply, I can't even describe it. Uh, yes, sorry. I could have bribed about embarrassing Mr. Chadworth to my grandchildren had, had you not... For that, I assign you a penalty, Mr. Wright. Okay, all right, that's fair. All right, you take the penalty, all right? All right, wow, I finally got my mouth shut. So then, the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what, mis what Mr. Ungard's motive for murder was, that suddenly disappeared into thin air. No, not really, because once once he he goes out and he makes the the accusation, the accusation itself is is pretty damning enough. But then but then he wouldn't even need a note or a fake one. He could just set it. You know, he could just make some shit up. Eh, I don't know. I don't know what would work there. It's fine though. But Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ungar monitored Mr. Creator 24 hours a day. No, that was your argument. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ungar didn't know. How how are we arguing that the cameras had the resolution to see fucking writing and read and fucking letter? It was right back at you, Mr. Chadworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery in another place? Uh... Order, 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 Mr. Chadworth. It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. Uh... As I figured. Huh? As you figured. As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Chadworth, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. I have to show you my final form. Genie mode, activate. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ungard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Speculation. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. 
However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. Chow is stuttering. This is not like him at all. Is it a parrot? Unusual. Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Chowworth? This witness is the one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley D. Killer to commit the murder? It's impossible. Who in the no such person exists who can answer that question with such such certain such certainty? Yes, Mr. Chadworth. Who is this witness? Shelley D. Killer. It's it, it is it's um yes, go on, who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley D. Killer. Oh, Mr. D. Killer. Okay. Whoa! Wait, Shelly D. Killer? Um, you mean the killer? Or, I mean, the assassin? Yes, your honor. He's coming here, to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm, well, well, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes. Is this alright with you? Uh, does that matter? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, your honor. Hmm, I wonder if it really is alright to do this. I mean, it, it goes against his rights. Very well then, the prosecution calls its witness to the stand. And with my genie powers, here he is. I've summoned him. Fucking talk for us. Dance, you motherfucker, dance. Chadworth, is there no other way left to us? Now then, what? Um, your name and your uh, occupation. Oh my god, did they put the walkie talkie on the stand? Oh my god, did they put the walkie talkie on the stand? Is there a walkie talkie on the stand? Oh my god, please, 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 please put a walkie talkie on the stand. So this this is this is his mouth and that match that matches the stitches the line in in the in the bottom in the in, the, in his face and that's the mod oh that's that's so good that's so good and that kind of matches his his mustache ah uh, nice very very good sir my name is Shelly D Killer and I'm a professional assassin I, I say what is going on here Your Honor. How can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. D. Killer will testify to this court. So this must be what that, what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh, oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. D. Killer himself. We put a parrot on the sand, but no, this is too far. Witness, please present some sort of proof that you are, in fact, Shelly D. Killer. My killer voice. I understand. Please wait a second. I'll kill someone right now. Mm, okay, I'm listening. Ah! Oh, oh mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. He definitely is Shelly D. Killer. Okay, continue. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm so hungry. Maya, Maya. Uh, a, a voice. Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. Okay, then, then, wh th why didn't we just do this from the start, man? What? <laughs> we are satisfied for that this man is indeed Shelly D. Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many sources under these, these circumstances, so. Now then, witness, there is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of any anything else. And, and what would that be? Is it not? Is it Gumshoe doing the voice? Uh, oh yeah, my hey, hey, pal. Uh, at the request of a client, you killed Mr. Han Karita. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Karita. Maya, shut up. No, I'm so hungry. That's me doing Maya's. I mean, that's Maya. That's my. <laughs> cool. Now we have answered that. Let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. A bad dream. Shelly D. Killer. What is he going to say? There's something must, I must first state to an assassin. I 
to play a game. Nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself, and that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm. Oh, Mr. D. Killer seems to be a very clever man. He should change his name. It's, I, I'd say, I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. <laughs> well, he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor. Mr. D. Killer is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. Hmm. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Is is he gonna do what I said? He's gonna he's gonna throw fucking unguard under the bus? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. What if I use my powers for good instead of evil? What could I make happen? There's something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than trust between the client and himself. Okay, let's go. We can hear anything you have have to say later. Can you please t just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? S sorry, go on. Well, it appears this, will, this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. Not even the blue badger. That's, the, that's only because you don't know about my situation. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome, even though I show it to fucking everyone. And that is why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the D-Killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab, stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes, fuck them. That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly... Enough? Please, no more. Very well. I'll go along with this. It was only a hypothetical anyway. And that is the reason I'm here today on this witness stand. That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be a very bad, bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their pr prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this, and this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You, who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? I'm a judge of the underground court. To the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, but would you care to die? Uh, no, no, uh, I didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Ah, uh, that ego mania, mania, maniacal, ego maniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Oh man, the call out somehow that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Patience, try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and clo close, so you're going to have to work to get him to talk. You gotta walk the talkie. I'm not his therapist, you know. There's an first state. This is... Wait, what? How are we presenting something to him? In a fast efficient manner, sorry, but you said the brick plan or you broken the okay. This is the second time this happened. I, I am not seeing the prompt for this at all. I'm sorry if I'm missing something simple, it's very possible I'm missing something simple. But when it comes to go back and press something that you've already pressed after pressing everything else, like I, I am I am just blind to that hint that that's something you have to do. Sorry, you said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. 
And that's why you feel that you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. George, I want to play a game. And this is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. Now then, I believe it's time I reveal the name of my client. Do you agree? Hold it. What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of the cl of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Carita? That person's name is Adrian Andrews. That was a Joe Witness. That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it was and it is Adrian Andrews. What? This can't be. On the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. D. Killer just stabbed Mr. Chadworth in the back. Stabbed Chadworth in the back. I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. D. Killer told him a different name. Matt Ungard, perhaps. I knew it. This, this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But, but you were the one who summoned this witness. Grr. Grr. You, you Shelly D. Killer. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt Ungard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Hmm. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided the suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most, de but most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. And even though it's from a walkie-talkie and we haven't really confirmed it, um, I'm taking this as proof. Fucking slam dunk. Mr. D. Killer's client, who requested the murder, was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt Ungard is innocent. I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Beep. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going, Ungard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Chowworth is right. The killer is lying. And Ungard, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would ab absolve the defendant? Okay, so... <sighs> now they fucked up. Because if they had just went to the judge and said, Look, it, it, let's just, can, this is what's going on. Maya's being held hostage. Can we please, let, let's just go through this, do a fake trial, and get uh, Ungard found, found uh, not guilty. And then we get Maya, and then we just try Ungard again, but this time we don't try him for murder. We try him for what he actually did, which is hiring an assassin to kill, to kill, um, uh, uh, fucking uh, Juan, but now we know like the, the the hiring of the assassin has been a part of this court now. This part, and it's been confirmed that it wasn't him by the 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 assassin himself. So now we can't do it. Now it's now it's the same crime. We're fucked. So now now we have to make a decision between getting my. This was this was really dumb. They should not have done this. If there were ah uh, fucking hell. Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would resolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelly D. Killer is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. 
Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now, it was all one big lie. Miss Andrews. Suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. And then the killer comes back and murders you and Maya. What? Well, he could, might do that anyway. What do you mean? He might do that anyway. That's always that's always a problem. Like like just going along with him thinking that he's gonna, gonna let Maya go is kind of dumb. Like it's the same fucking thing. If the judge pronounced him not guilty, he wouldn't be tried again. Double jeopardy. It would have to be staged, as you said. But then you would have to fool the entire nation and actually let Ungar go free for some time. And the killers and no right. So people in chat said it could be tried retrial if the evidence was found without always having implications. It's not double jeopardy because it's a different crime. The original crime. He's he's on trial for killing um, Juan. So if we do, if we get him found not guilty, and then right away after Maya's done, we charge him again for hiring the 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 assassin. That's a different crime. That's why it's not double jeopardy. I don't even know if double jeopardy would apply to J Japanifornia court, but it's a, that's why I said it. It's a different crime. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. The testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was horrible, horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. D. Killer himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button. Donning the Nickel Samurai costume. But that's... That's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss, Miss Celeste Impacts was a large part of your life. How, chat, how is it not a different crime? He was on trial for directly killing the, the, the fucking the victim. And it turns out that he didn't do that. And that's true. He didn't. He didn't directly kill the victim. The assassin did. And then you just go with a different trial. I really think that would fly. I really, really think that's a different thing. I really think that's a whole different, different fucking circumstance. Like, I think you could, you could even probably make an argument that because it's a fake trial and the, the judge is in on it and it's this big thing that they're doing, which by the way, they did half anyway, that, that you could say that he wasn't even really found not guilty the first time. It was all just complete fake. It wasn't a proper verdict. It was just, we're just going along with it. It's just theater to get the hostage out of the fucking hostage situation. There's no such thing as a fake trial. D killer's the only one that has to believe it. It's a, what are you talking about? It's just, it's just to get Maya out. What the fuck, you, oh shit man. Please, please tell me someone's following. Please, please tell me someone's following. This is like, it's not like, oh my god, there's no legal precedent for this. Someone's being held hostage. You wanted to follow her and you wanted to re revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I know. Mr. Wright. You, you know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story, who the real killer is. Tell them. Please help me. Yes, I know the truth. That's right. Yes, Your Honor. I believe you have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or, or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty ver verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? Alright, let's request the, the... Requesting the verdict is the wrong play, but let's see what happens when we do it. Your Honor, defense requests that. It's no use. I can't. It feels like I lost my voice. Phoenix, I can't do it, Maya, Mia. It's. I can't accept a not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know, but Matt on guard is a killer, a murderer. I can't. I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be conv convicted, then I am no better than Ungard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that it is because of Ed Chadworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten Ungard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him. <gasps> yes, you do. Husbando. Oh, 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 oh. Ms. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to, be allowed to further question Mr. D-Killer. Oh, I'm hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright. 
Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through witnesses' lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. Nope. <laughs> nope. But okay. <laughs> it's fun. It's dramatic. There's still more evidence to look at. I'm sure that once those priests arrive here in this very courtroom, <laughs> a miracle will occur. Very well. The trial will continue. Mr. Chadworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. D. Killer. Right away, Your Honor. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, I want to hire you to kill someone. Actually, we would like to know, hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about usually done? But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. D. Killer, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You, you legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? Okay, he should just say no and hang up. What is he doing? He doesn't need to do this. Just say no and hang up. What the? As, as I always say quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime, while pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that, that Juan Carrito was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client has broken the rules. Hmm, this is the most unexpected turn of events. For the um, fifth time now. However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Okay, can we can we tell him that the real client has actually broken the rules? Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Chadworth. We still have the cross-examination to do. But but you don't need to question testimony like this, do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness as if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What is what this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony then, then I'll expose the lies in that oh so beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us. Sorry, I've already said it quite a few times, Adrian. Okay. Well, what is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, I might raise suspicions on his end, but if I have to do something to waste more time. Um, witness, about requesting a hit. Yes. How much is your fee? I see you are quite a dark hearted man, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. Ugh, no, no, no. Well, Mr. Wright? Yes. Y you. You want to kill me? You want me dead, don't you? <laughs> what? Why would you think something like that? You're. <laughs> Guilty! Mr. Phoenix Wright! You are hereby declared guilty! Witness, let's continue. Why did you disclose the name of your client? They are your client, are they not? I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very effective at my job. Uh, yeah. Well, a change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. D. Killer. Does it? And their and their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought that they could run away from their guilt. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one was to waste their time, has waste their time including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. You try to make things easy. My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased with a knife, and even hide my card from sight, that is something I cannot overlook. Hmm, it's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him without him being here. While well, pretending to be the first person to discover the body in the blah 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 blah. So you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you could use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan your alibi too. Ah, uh, no, I already told you, I have no intention of using your services ever. Why does he keep looking at me like in the one on trial? <laughs> I'm gonna sleep with one I open one, one I open tonight, right? From the very beginning. 
That's correct. From before my client visited the room. All my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. So why did you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around at the scene of the crime is pretty risky. Why would someone go, who has requested a murder go to the crime scene anyway? Hmm, that is true. I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. On Guard. If that's the case, why, not, why didn't the person just request that you do it? Sadly, that is not possible, huh? My job is to kill, that is all, and to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card that is so, that is so my clients may escape blame, to protect them is my duty. Then why'd you take the bear? Hmm, it stays for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall. And that's all you have to testify? Yes, and pray that I will never be called to, st to the stand again. Again, as in, you, you, as in you plan to continue. I must, as I have yet to find a person to take my place and become the fourth successor. <laughs> Pandemonium! Actually, how would you like the new life, Mr. Attorney? Yeah, that's pretty good. Excuse, excuse me. Uh, no, 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 I'm fine, really. Are you really now? I wonder what kind of man the judge thinks I am now. What are you going to do, Phoenix? All I can do is now is expose the lies. That's true. However, you realize it will be very bad for a client, right? Uh, I'm so confused. What do you want to happen here, Mia? But the one thing I know for sure is I can't let this trial end yet. Is there just a... Okay, is this one of the ones that I have to, like, press something again? Or what? What's the one that, um, that, uh, Chow Chow said? Hmm, that's a bit weird. So, why did she do the juice thing? Objection! Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. D-Killer. What is the meaning of that attitude? You just got objected when Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room. Your client had no idea that Juan Corrida was, had been murdered. Oh, but how? How do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. Oh, the glass? Yeah, but her testimony is so riddled with lies. Mr. D-Killer's supposed, supposed client thought Mr. Corita had only fainted, which is w why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm, but isn't that just a part of Andrew, Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. Uh, I see your point. Mr. Chaworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had this exact same thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? Uh, is it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have not have a knowledge of Mr. Creed's death. Okay, how long is left on the, on the game chat? Is it an hour? Because if it's an hour, we should take a break, and I can go take the puppies out again, and then we'll continue and just end it now. We're an hour over already. Is there like an hour left in the game? Half an hour? Like what? Yeah? Okay, let's take a break. Okay, I'm gonna take a break, take the puppies out, I'm gonna use the bathroom. You should go do that too, you should go get a drink, and then we will uh, reconvene. The stream will take a, a 10 minute recess.
All right, sorry about that. How did this get so tangled? Two different parts of the uh, <sighs> of the chair. Water Slave, who's resubscribed for four months with Hey Joe, have you heard of Tribe 9? It's the new baseball game from the Dangan Romper creator. Now we can truly become Leon. Really? Hmm, I'll check that out. Thank you, Water Slave. XXD Killer XX is subscribed for the first time. Thank you very much, D Killer. Welcome, welcome. Not sus at all. Not sus at all. Um, DWXYDX says you don't have to say mystery games literally want you to be questioning what's going on even if you like the game you're not actually gonna end up questioning the logic of most plot points because that's still playing the game sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes it's bad writing chat needs to be okay with that yeah but coming at this game like um like you're right of course but coming at this game uh there's an established um not only established response to it uh but also an established like what's a problem what isn't you know so uh, you're going up against a lot of consensus, and a lot of people think that consensus is objective. Sorry to drop the O word out of nowhere, uh, and that is when we get into some problems. Um, there's also like a fair amount of people now that just just watch the stream um, to to hate on me a little bit. Now there's two types of haters. There's haters that hate me for opinions on um, videos or for you know just some tribal bullshit. But there's also haters that hate me because, you know, I said something bad about their game on stream once or they thought I said something stupid and now they just watch just because they just want to see more stupid shit and just like rag on me every time they get. They're a minority, but they're around and I think sometimes I read their messages a little too much. But it's hard for me not to just like hone in on something that someone's saying because if I'm going to read a message in chat that's like a dissenting opinion, I want it to be a strong one. I don't want to misrepresent chat at all. So yeah, that happens. Pathologically Fresh has resubscribed for five months with VOD Squad. I'm excited to get to this part. Well, it's pretty good. Like this, this ending is pretty good. It's not as good as it could be, I think, but it's pretty good. It's fun. Some of the hate watchers are even on, are even on Discord, which just blows my mind. Uh, Puckered Starfish has used 99 bits to say it was the judge all along. Oh, 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 oh why are you suspecting me? Uh, Curiosity has subscribed for the first time on Prime. Thank you very much, Curiosity. Curitanicity, I think. Uh, key to truth has used some business to say the law is very clear just like in possessed spirit channel cases that have been a different face. <laughs> Dylan Panda 1231 has used some business to say sorry for interrupting but are you excited about rainy day Wednesday with use game Persona 5 Royal? Of course I am, of course I am. We love you buddy. No, I know most of you love me and it's fine. Even the haters love me a little bit in their own way but you know, it's fine. <sighs> Let's just say there's a reason, you know, more than one reason why I just choose my battles a little more carefully now it's just not worth it uh puckered starfish has gifted out five more more subs to player boy 117 that's a bit too close to bobby bob to me uh curie 745 again a little too close ob12323 well now this is just getting spooky covid got nothing on this uh pvssi hmm, what could it mean um I think you gave some bits, or you got another sub earlier? I remember saying that name out before. And Mr. Costco. <laughs> Alright. Welcome, uh, resubs as well. Uh, thank you very much, Puckwood Starfish. Thank you, thank you. Falco5 has resubscribed for 18 months with Shift 1, Shift 2. Thank you very much, Falco5. Thank you, thank you. Do you feel Ace Attorney 1 so far is doing a better job with satisfying endings compared to Danganronpa 1 and 2? Absolutely, yeah. They, they end much better. Yeah, for sure. No no doubt about that. Yeah, no no doubt. Uh, V3 ended quite strongly for me, but yeah. For one for Danganronpa 1 and 2, yeah. Then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Kree's death. If not... 
then that could only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. <sighs> How strange! How strange. Yes. Why is it the attorney has yet to raise an objection at, all, at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if D Killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Mr. Chadworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, sorry. Well, that was an awfully weak objection for the two of you. Anyway. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Well, you can do that. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the t for the items D Killer left behind to get here, I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies within the with those items. <laughs> this request came to me oh about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the reward ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. What was this bar and uh, what occurred? And this is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mistakes. Hmm, no mistakes. Hmm, so you physically met your client, huh? That's correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. One week ago, are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. I, of course, have my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please stop. Hmm. No, keep going. I want to know what I'm up against. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time. Did you ask why on that specific night? No, I tried to fulfill all the conditions of my client of, the, of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Press further. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Huang Karita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. And even though earlier I said I'm just a killer and nothing else, I said, sure, why not? This one's on me. You must be talking about the, this bear puzzle. Inside the figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to, this, to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference, after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where that bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Uh, it was very important. Why would she go back in the room afterwards? The testimony just now has made one thing clear, and that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony. <laughs> We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was that brief, brief pause? Press further. Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? It was very important. Of course, it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. D. Killer had met his client before the murder, then it is it, it, it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Ah, uh, um, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. Uh, I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, please. Think carefully. <laughs> now then, will the witness please continue? <laughs> what occurs is just written. Really <laughs> so your client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw his suspicion. If you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. 
Okay, so it seems like it's it's that one, or was that the uh, the thing? Okay. Uh, about a week ago, it was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. We met a certain bar to discuss the finals of a few matters. That is what occurred. Trust my memory. I believe I have made no mistakes. Okay, so do I? Is this one of the ones I have to press? Like she said to, to get more information, right? Do I press again? Am I supposed to say it's not important? Okay, so it's not. Alright, huh. Alright, so I'm supposed to... that Mia said something about getting getting more information so am I supposed to say there's no way you could have met why did she pick up the card then or I guess she picked up the card because um because she wanted to frame unguard so that's fine I mean she just could have taken the bear at any time right p.m. for one hour that oh am I not gonna take damage okay oh I do okay great you're on a city countries oh, fucking hell fucking hell I'm safe coming so I can have some of my life back. Okay, is there something about how like, she doesn't drink or something? Like, that's, that's really dumb, but... I'm getting the impression I have to like fucking like be like no it's not important and then some bullshit's gonna happen. Let it go. If I ask about them, I'm gonna be good guess. I see. That's fine then. Okay, maybe not actually. Let it go. Community that your testimony has been made at this point has been reliable at this point. Okay, I don't think that's it, right? What was the other one? Press further. Oh, maybe it's like the bear. Like, no, it's not. It's not. The bear isn't important, but. Why he meets the clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. Well, what do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I've already told you, Mr. Wright, I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. That's why I thought I can trust this person as a client. Hmm, is it true what they say about talking face to face? Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just any importance? It was very important. Okay, um... That was kind of weird. I think now it's important? If I heard just I think just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Huh, really? 
If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. The moment I saw him, I thought I could trust this person as a client. Okay, so you might have just misspoke. Like, this is an easy, like, oh, sorry, I just misspoke. But as we know now, that was not how it turned out, correct? What do you mean? Adrian Andrews turned out to be a client who couldn't stick to the rules, right? Well, yes, I suppose you are correct. Um, so you'd like to turn one last time. Are you sure your testimony's accurate? Okay, so is it just her? I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at the time? Yes, that's correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that's correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. What? Shelly the killer. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up about her. So what is the issue? What did you say just now? About her. If you had ever met with Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh! <laughs> order, order in the court. Mr. Wright, what does he mean by this? The witness testified to the following, that he always meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. All right, D-Killer, you're fucking dumb. You should just say, oh, sorry. You know, like I'm talking through a walkie talkie and shit. Yeah, I just misspoke. But he's never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, your honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. D. Killer's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. Whoa, that looks really, really bad. Mr. Chadworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, your honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is, without a doubt, a very androgynous name. Yes, I see. Unluckily for Mr. D. Killer, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender. And so, he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. What? What's going on? Shelly D. Killer. This court demands an explanation. Um, I, I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Uh, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Very well, but this time, please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, Todd. Request talking, request taking, part two. Yes, and now, now I remember, I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the for the murder of Juan Carita and two or three more and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client might look to be a man. Okay. Hmm. So you took this job through a letter or through a walkie-talkie. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony, which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know, I can't make him suspicious, but. I think we're okay, like we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. Aww, no matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Aww. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. Yes, now I remember, I took it across my mail. Did you just put like an order out? But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Oh, come now, let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Meow. Using your skill the silkiest voice is not going to work on me. Mm, but it'll work on me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess. That's right, you can't badger witness with such harsh words. He's literally a contract killer, dude. Um, you're a lawyer, so behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. Killer met with his client? Well, what's his nuts testimony? Like, yeah, they handed off the bear, right? The bear? Uh, let's press everything else first. 
Oh, sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Hmm, I see. Then your line of questioning was just another waste of time. It sounds fresh, Your Honor. That is the nature of right and wrong. And why could you not meet certain clients? Recently, I have been receiving more requests. If I meet... If I met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Hmm, nice business opportunities. On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined the times and now take requests via electronic mail. Uh, electronic mail? Do you have a to mail that is in, Do you have to mail that in a... Oh, that in a special insulated envelope. Uh, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. What I meant by electronic mail is what is commonly referred to as email. Email. In a contest of mimicry, the judge would beat a parrot hands down. Well, let's bring him back in. Let's find out. Ahem. Anyway, so you took this job without having met your client, and... Two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? No. It'd be really bad if I pushed his buttons the wrong way and he got mad. Alright, this feels like a warning. So let's save. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Yes? Everything I've said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. <sighs> Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? But that's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one? Wait. Uh-oh. This is looking really bad. I shouldn't press my luck. Alright, I have to... Have to think, is this worth pursuing? Yes, press further. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what those those these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that th this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? I don't fucking know. It was inside Mr. Korea's suitcase. And then, what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. I found this figurine at Mr. Ungard's mansion. If you give it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Ungard, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? Uh... No, not right now. It's no use, as long as I can't put my finger on the central problem here. Perhaps this witness is probably extremely dangerous. Hmm, it appears that Mr. Wright has no problems. Well then, witness, please continue. So you're saying that you never saw your client's face, not even once, but you just passed, you passed off the figurine? I did, once. It was when I went to give my client the figurine. Hmm, yes I see. Then why did you just get it wrong? But Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at the time. A mask? The Nickel Sam wearing a mask, I'm guessing. Okay. Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about this? Do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? But she had to give it back to you, I think? One thing does sort of stick out at me, Your Honor. Witness, I think the most you, just, you most definitely saw your client's face. Let's recall Mr. Powers' testimony. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. Matt gave the bellboy a tip. He received quite a large roll of cash from Mr. Ungard, and at the time, he was not wearing his nickel samurai mask. Oh. Uh. Order, order. Yes, now that you mention it, I do remember that. Witness. Ooh. But that's not his client? Yes, that night I did wander the floors of Bellboy. I received plenty of tips that night for, very, for carrying juice to the various rooms. Is that so wrong? Huh? The man who gave me that tip was not my client. Yeah. The... He was probably just a very generous person. I'm sorry, but sadly, we are not nearly so generous here. If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, I wouldn't be a prosecutor. Then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? Oh. 
a little deja vu. Isn't his salary more than enough for one man? Hmm. And where's your evidence that the large roll of cash was not in fact a tip? Come, Mr. Chatterworth, show me the money. What? <laughs> Mr. Attorney. Yes? You know, I think your line of questioning has been a little strange. In fact, I would say you don't seem to believe Miss Andrews is my client. Oh, no. It's not like that at all. I just think lies aren't a good thing, you know? Oh, I know and agree. And I agree. Sorry, I know and agree. Lies are not a good thing at all. Erk. I think we are on the same page now, aren't we, Mr. Attorney? Remember, if I feel threatened in any way, I am free to cut contact at any time. I'm sorry. Please for forgive my foolishness. I'm a foolish fool. Hmm, if only you were this apologetic all the time. Anyway, I do not see a huge contradiction here. Therefore, you may continue with you may continue with us. We pretty much reached the end the end of our rope here, huh? Seems like we're still okay to me, and that's exactly what is so bad. At the rate we're going, we will end up completely destroying the killer's lie. If we do that, you already know how serious of a situation that will put us in. Oh yeah. All I can do now is pray that those items reach us in time. Okay. What? All right. Safe. Okay, it doesn't say on the figurine that it was found at the house. So what, what, what did I pass on? something here. Very well, I will show you proof. Are you sure about this, Phoenix? Here's the proof that the witness met his client who wished Mr. Korea dead. Uh, the bear, they met afterwards. So, what do you think? You may say, what do you think? However, I am all for intents and purposes a transceiver radio. Oh, that's right, you can't actually see the evidence. Well, I don't think this was one I needed to see. I can hear the pure silence in the air there. Okay, that one's wrong. Alright, fuck. Uh, what did I not push him on? This is the figure in his end just by no somewhere in the statement is a contradiction, and yet, I know if I present something trivial here, he will cut the connection on its end. If you want to make a strong point, Phineas, you have to present strong evidence. She's right, so what do I do? Yeah, present evidence. Witness. Let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear and wait for her at the Yongar Mansion. Is that correct? Yes. Where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. What? This is a battle of wits. I can't let up on him. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. Uh, why not? Because she knew how to open it. Bear! Shelly the Killer, if you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside it. This item. I see where you're going. Yep, that's where I'm going. Where's everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Let's go! Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. Who the fuck is Miss Andrews? I was going to burn it for her sake. Oh, yes, her sake. Yeah, mm, yeah I can go for some sake right now. This is a long and fucking trial. And you get blazed, if any, even for a single minute. This bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands. I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Order, order, order. So, so that's where you two were going. I thought we were going to go get Kauai in Hawaii. So by the very... F fact that the suicide note was still inside the bear. It tells us your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means? It means, Your Honor, that it's impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Oh. Oh, my still not hung up. I'm a fucking idiot. Order, order, order! Ugh. Oh, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I, I'm sure I mentioned this before, how I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You, you must wish to break your end of our agreement. What agreement is that? No, that's not. That's enough. 
If that if that is your intention, then there's only one thing for me to do. Wait, please. Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. No, please, not that. Please wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end, and I may stay my hand otherwise. Uh, go Man, oh, Phoenix has a headache. Bailiff, some Tylenol. What in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Chatterworth? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness is outburst just now. Do you think there is a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should. Chatterworth, we can't do this. Can we keep this up, Maya, Sheil? Oh, I'm psychic now. The prosecution, I... Let's come over, everyone. Even you are. The prosecution rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley DeKiller's client is Adrian Andrews. Uh, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. If, it, uh, if I end the trial here, right now, then your client, Madame Guard, would be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. Yeah, just charge, and then we could go to court, and we could prove that it wasn't her. There we go. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's just do it. Yeah. Prosecution has no further questions, and so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Madame Guard, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. Alright, I'm saving it. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. Chill. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Ha. So I guess even the old fuddy-duddy figured me out. Hmm, this is pretty sus, but you know what? I'm still innocent. Let's go. Time to hit the bar. Oh, Mr. Unguard. How did you get that in here? Is that some sake? What an atrocious lawyer I have, giving his own client up like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap, it's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice or should I save Maya's life? You better get unguarded with guilty sentence, okay? But if I do if I did that, Maya would die. But if I say he's innocent, then Miss Andrews will be charged with mur as the murderer. Do I say he's guilty or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. No, she <sighs> She's just gonna be charged with it. She's just gonna be charged with it. It all hinges on what I choose. Now that Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Mr. Matt, on guard is innocent. Humph. There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't. I can't do this, but I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. Breaking the song. My client, Matt on guard, is not guilty. We're waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Matt on guard, your client deserves an answer. Maya, I'm sorry. Matt on guard is. Francesca von Karma. What are you doing here? Oh! You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? 
This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off of that, that scruffy fool. This has all been one big fucking game to us. We're seeing if you have what it takes to join the League of Lawyers. You prove that you will defend your client for the right reasons, but not for the wrong ones. Welcome, Matt on guard. Good job, good job performing. Here's Guan. Juan, come out, come out. You did great, it's the corpse. Adrian Andrews, really, really good. Chadworth coming back for the thing. Welcome to the League of Lawyers, right? Oh, oh yes, welcome, welcome. Did, did you did you bring them the final pieces? Do you have them? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Miles Chadworth. The Von Karma is perfect in every way. The evidence is here in perfect condition. Don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine, and his injuries are minor. All the items are inside this. What a filthy old coat this is. That's gum shoes. I can spot his tattered rags anywhere. I apologize for its ugliness, but there was nothing else to wrap the items in. I fought long and hard this whole trial, all for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. It's just a Snickers! <laughs> okay, hand it over, I'm hungry! <laughs> Wait, there's something else! It's another Snickers! <laughs> <laughs> oh, your final evidence. <laughs> this trial's already over. All the rates is for me to hand on my friend. I don't believe that anyone's prison now. What changed the outcome of this trial? What? <laughs> Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Miss Von Karma be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. Hmm. Alright, let's save it again. I suppose you were right, Mr. Chadworth. I grant permission to do so. However, this one this one obvious rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will be not accepted by this court. Now, Miss Von Karma, if you please. These pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm, he must have been in quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor, the killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there will be something that will turn this whole situation around like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That's all we can hope for. Like, why are you here? You're just a nothing. You're just a nobody. The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this, Kase? Uh, no. I'm pretty sure there was no gun involved in this case. There's no real benefit to hearing about it. Please present the next piece of evidence. Pistol added to the court record. The second piece of evidence is a videotape. I bet the killer took that in front of government. Yeah, that, that is. Yeah, that's, that's important. Yeah. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh, yeah. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. The, the killer went back to it for it? That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Hmm. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shelly the killer is no ordinary man. The last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Oh, I can I can question for all of it? Oh shit, I didn't know. I thought I had to only pick one. Was that used during the crime? I'm almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it. The killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. There is one thing I found interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There is a button missing from on this uniform. A button? It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. Hmm. All right. Day three of the investigation. Let's go. Bellboy's uniform added to the court record. That is all I have to present, Your Honor. Hmm. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure we're, were we under normal circumstances, these items from Shelley the Killer's hideout would be very important clues. However, our question is not who did the killing. 
It is, who is the client? Yes, that's correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Let's watch the tape. Thank you for your hard work, Miss Von Karma. You may step down now. Wait, Your Honor. Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. This court already has all the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix, I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make... But you have to make that miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But but no matter how you think about it, it's... it's Try for my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of this situation for us. Two. The first. Make unguard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. If Ungard himself wishes to be convicted, then he will let his hostage go. That may be true, but that's asking me to do the impossible. The second way... Force the killer to end his contract with Ungard. If the killer is would no longer think of Ungard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He is a man who values his du duty toward his clients above all else. I know both these seem like impossible feats at first, but if you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is, the judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. If he's like, whoa, what are you guys talking about down there? Fe Phoenix, think th things through from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? The other side? Wait, does she mean... You mean, to turn things around? A turnabout! Smoke signal Chadworth! Ask for evidence. Fe Phoenix, the judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? The person who needs the evidence. The defense, prosecution, and the judge. We have seen all the, th the pieces of the evidence, and that is how we have come to know the truth. But there is one person who is yet to see them all, and that person does not know the truth. That truth, it may be what will bring about the miracle in the end. Can't you just talk like a normal person, Mia? There are no objections this time, correct? Now then, I will pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? I uh, already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I'm not saying it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then you want to show the evidence to that person? Yes, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, I will grant you I'll grant you one chance. One chance. Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. That's impossible to turn the situation around in one try. One try. That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything that has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking Ungard down at the same time. Now that Mr. Wright, let's not waste any more time. Who would you like to show evidence to? I want to show evidence to... I want to show that... I want to show fucking uh, D Killer that Matt Ungard fucking recorded him as a backup. I want to show it to Shelly D Killer. Hmm, I see. And now, tell this court what one piece of evidence you'd like to show this person. Okay, like, does he know what's on the tape? Right? The tape, right? Or the camera? Camera or the tape? It's gotta be the tape, right? It's gotta be the tape. It's either the tape or the camera. It's gotta be the tape. Well, what do you think, Mr. Chadworth? Uh, um, I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. All right, it looks like I managed to convince him. All right, uh, we need a volunteer to describe what's going on in the videotape through the transceiver. Maya, she's okay, right? Did I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Hmm, what's this about? I'm just going to ignore it and just not ask any more about what's going on. Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three, three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most whatever. However, it was, order, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. I thought so. I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. Do you know what? The, do you know the contents of this tape? I was sternly told by my client to not watch it, so I have absolutely no idea. You're an idiot. Actually, you are on this tape. Me. 
there was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true, Mr. Wright? Who, who was it that planted a camera? Well, the only person who could have placed a camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. Leon! That was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, your honor. Yes, sir. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright, why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did Matt Ungard film the crime scene? The reason why he did it is when to get out of this whole mess. There's only reason why your client would secretly film the crime scene. They want to see Juan get his, would want to blackmail on you, would interest your skills, want to blackmail on you. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you, and this is what they had what they said. But I'm no weakling, I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. Oh, come on come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video as to blackmail you. What do you have to say that to that, Shelly the Killer? Oh. You don't have to say to that. Why didn't you fucking tell me that? Fucking yesterday. What the fuck is wrong with you? We could have fucking avoided this whole fucking drawn out fucking shitty situation. Why didn't you just fucking say that at the beginning? It looks like. It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. This is the kind of, the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and, and plots of how to use the people around them to protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Who is your client? Yes, you told us one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that's right. They're fucking sus. But what if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? I'd fucking vote them off. That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then, that client would become my next target. For the honor of the D-Killer name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. Oh, 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 oh. I see. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. Ah, I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright. Yes. My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you, your precious item. What the? I'm not an item. She could have spoke the whole time? Maya, I thought I'd never see you again. Maya, oh, oh thank goodness. Um, this trial appeals to have come to its conclusion. However, I, uh, actually I am sort of I'm hungry. I don't quite know what just... Okay. This ah! was wrong camera. Where did that... She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. <laughs> Mr. Engard, it looks like somehow you got what you wanted. You will finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly you should be happy. Before that, I would like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watched this video. Help me. Now then, Your Honor, the verdict, if you please. Oh, is this alright with you, Mr. Wright? We have finally reached the end of a very long battle. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there's no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Plead whichever way your heart tells you. Right, Chief. Get fucked. Congratulations, Mr. Mountain Guard. 
Please make sure to savor every moment of what little time you have left. Your Honor, as always, the defense pleads not guilty. Very well. This court finds the defendant mad on guard. Please wait. What's the matter? If if I get a not guilty, I'll, I'll be killed. I, I, I'm, I'm... No! Guilty, 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 guilty. Oh, man. Is that how you got the first set of scars? As always, it looks like we have uncovered the real truth. We? I don't remember you helping out with how much of this. Mr. Chatworth, how is Madame Guard? I have left Miss Von Karma in charge of his incarceration. Did you enjoy your another blackout? Every... <laughs> It's like it's like the judge needs to charge up his his fucking like verdict laser whenever he's like every under case he's like he goes to sleep and dormant for a second. All right, oh I'm awake. All right, okay, are they gone? All right, okay, fucking not guilty. All right, here we go. Like yeah, I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, witness? Yes, I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. The first time I was called to the witness stand during this trial, all I felt was despair. She must be talking about the time Chadworth really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. My giant hands can sense it. If you're going to say that you choose death, that is no concern to me. But after that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. Wow, that's a message to send. Yeah. That's good. And today, people who are mentally unstable and maybe suicidal and really dependent, what they just need is someone to tell them to fuck off and die. To, and the two of you use your combined strength to convict them. Out. I, I felt like I'd finally been saved. Yeah, that's great. Great message, game. Wow, the first time I've ever seen a smile. I'm really happy that you, were too, that you two were in charge of this case. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is, this is the first time I felt comfortable with myself, with who I am. Thank you so much, everyone. Looks like we have resolved everything at last. As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits. Speaking of spirits, where's the sake? And that is good enough for me. That is all. This court is adjourned. Confetti court! What? No confetti court! God damn it. March 23, 5, 14 p.m. District court, law, defendant law. Where's the guilty? Come on, give us the guilty! You were great out great there, Phoenix. What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. <laughs> you got them a guilty word this time. But you have to look past all that to what's really important. You now realize that there is something more than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think think to the moments before Miss Von Karma arrived with the final piece of evidence. Think about Oh shit, there's like a the, the last thing, right? Hmm, now that's right. Let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. I can't count the evidence of anyone this is my harsh life. My client, Madame Guard, is. Is he guilty or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then, and your answer. Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. But I chose not guilty. Right. Did it bug and choose guilty? I chose not guilty. Chad, I have, I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. Really? You're telling us the truth, right, Mr. Chadworth? Yes, she's quite safe. She's on her way here as we speak in a, in a patrol car. They're stopping at McDonald's, though. She wants a burger. She should probably go to Burger King instead. Their burgers are way better. Ah, Mystic Maya. Mystic Maya is safe. You did it. You really did it, Mr. Nick. Oh, she punches deceptively hard for a kid. I, I believed in you. I kept saying to myself, Mr. Nick was safer. Mr. Nick was safer. Wah. Uh, um, thanks. Oh, what's wrong? Miss Von Karma. Um, about earlier. Oh, thanks. Ow. Oh, why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You foolishly fool. You lost. 
Your perfect win record has now been crushed, just like mine and Chadworth's. We don't talk about it, and yet, you are still happy. Welcome to the League of Lawyers! I don't think you'll ever understand, Mr. Karma. How dare you? Don't worry, she may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. She needs to go spend some time in the Undercourt. Chadworth. Anyone else kind of want to see the Undercourt? I'm kind of building it up in my head now. I kind of want to see the Undercourts. I think the Undercourts is kind of fun. It's like a fun concept. For my own personal victories and for guilty verdicts. <laughs> I use every dirty trick in the book. It's so my <laughs> one record rate spotless. But... A man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... Merry Christmas! It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened, so I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Chadworth chooses death. Humph, as well as you should have. Whoa, a prosecutor who has shamed himself with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. I beat you twice, Von Karma, but that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something, and it was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. What foolish nonsense. We prosecutors use anything we can to attack the defendant, but every time we did, we did so. No matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his undying faith and fast and loose interpretation of the law. <laughs> and then, before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. What? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses, the truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have, erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This I promise you. The truth. Yes, that's the reason why prosecutors and defense attorneys exist. Romantic tension, but I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you, right? That's why you couldn't forgive me, this man who went into hiding. Isn't that right? This man, who only had his sights set on victory, who ran away into the night. Ah, uh, is Mr. Chadworth right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with was because I believed in the things you said to me when I was a kid, and when we only knew each other for a couple of months, I based my whole life around this inter interaction, you young Sheldon motherfucker, all those years ago. Can you kiss him already? And you, you betrayed your own words. That's why one year ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Moss Chadworth I knew had died. At least, that's what I told myself. <sighs> you pathetic fool. Just kiss him already. Fucking kiss. Miss Von Karma. I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. I have you know that in the last couple weeks, I became inefficient. Let, let me marry you right now. Let's go. We're in a courthouse. Me or the judge? We'll do it right now! A von Kammer is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Chadworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. I'm gone! <laughs> Francesca. <laughs> what's that what's that mean from Sailor Moon when Tuxedo Mask shows up and does something and is like, you know, my work here is done and, and she's like, but you didn't even do anything and he's just like, whoa like, <laughs> This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track the Tetu Gumshoe? I'll return this to the precinct later. There's something else. Ah, uh, isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. But look on the bright side, right? Now I have a whip. Let's go home. You should keep this, right? Um, okay. Oh, okay. Alright. Damn, I didn't know that. Okay, Nick. 
But my oh uh, she's okay. You know what? This was the best case because she wasn't here for the whole thing. You're right, chat. This is the best one. This one, then one four, and then turn around, big top. Maya, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya. This picture is awkward as fuck. Oh, Nick, I knew you would come through. You got on guard convicted like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. Well, of course I did. You know I would never desert you. But we repress our luck this trial. You're really lucky to be standing there. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did if I did crack, I... <laughs> Croak, sorry. Sorry, that wasn't on purpose. I would just come back and haunt you like a pad goes through pearly. <laughs> Is it really that easy to do something like that? Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, don't mention it. Maya. Oh, Mr. Chadworth. Um, I'm relieved you're alright. Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Chadworth. Um, well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. Huh. Growl. Grrr. Alright. I think it's time we got out of this depressing place. Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick. Food. Grub. Chow. I'm starved. Spaghetti. All the time. I'm so hungry, even you look like a nice juicy burger on a bun to me, Nick. You think I look like a burger? I'm a prime rib at best. Man, I haven't had a prime rib in a long time. Come, in, come with us, Mr. Chatterworth, please. Uh, um, if you insist. Oh, we insist. Alright, so how about we hit up our usual burger joint? Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food. So I decided that we have to make it up by having another feast. Uh, another feast? Come on, Nick. Food. You're buying, by the way. March 23, 7.38 p.m. Gateway Hotel. Hey, pal. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole, of all things. A telephone pole? Then it wasn't a red light that got him? You did it again, city boy! Felt like my dear old heart was gonna give out on me, and I ain't joking. Yeah, it was more exciting than the last episode of Steel Samurai. Thanks. Now looky here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you reckon you bully Mr. Rat too hard? If you don't start being a lot nicer to him, he might just kick it. Tonight, even. I'm really glad that this is uh, Goofy's final scene in these games. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now, everyone gather round. Y'all are gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lauder bought, bought herself a new camera. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on, tonight's all about eating, so let's go chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Amen. Dude, you know, when you think about it, you were the one who saved the day, detective. Huh? Oh, me? You really think so? He's right. What? If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think this item, w this this trial would have had a very different ending. All right, where's the judge? Okay, let's get this party started. Judge in the fucking house. He's pounding on his gavel on all the table. Come on, where's the judge? Judge, judge, judge. Ah, uh, well, you know, it's ho 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 ho. Huh? Wait, that's odd. When I ran off with the things from D Killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Four. Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. There was a fourth item. A bomb! Aw, uh, oh, come on, y'all. It's over! But who, boy, I tell ya, you really are something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped, never a dull moment with you, huh? Can't wait for my spin-off game. Super Lotta Heart 64, huh, you think? Why does she look so happy about that? We're being shut away for two whole days. Weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. I felt so hopeless. So to keep my mind off of things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had it rough, gal. So where's this picture of yours? Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see Myst Mystic Maya's picture. Alright, what kind of spooky bullshit is this going to be? Hmm, you know, I don't know where it went. Aw, that's too bad. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Uh... It sure is nice to finally see- what, what the fuck would just happen here? Beep, 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 beep. Hmm. Where is it, Chadworth? 
this thing is picking something up. Ah, uh, that's, that's Miss Von Karma's receiver. Ugh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. I can't believe she, she stuck a tracking, tracking device on me. That's odd. Even though you're standing right here, the tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, it's probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Chadworth, you haven't even eaten anything yet. What's happening here? This is really ominous. And you've eaten way too, and you've eaten way too much, you glutton. I had fun tonight. Now if you excuse me, I'll see you at home, right? Wait. What? I just want to say. Thanks, Chadworth. You really saved me out there. I love you. Humph. If anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone are enough here. Waffles, tonight, let's do the dishes together. I wonder if there's anything I can give him to express how I feel. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, uh, I'm a lawyer! The whip? We give him the whip? I think it's lawyer. Lawyer? What are we giving him? Is it lawyer? It's the whip? Is it really the whip? It's actually the whip. All right, I'm trusting chat. If you guys are memeing, then you, don't, you guys don't get it. Huh. What's this? Still reading my post? Thank you. It's all thanks to you two. You and her. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. It looks like Mr. Traworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Miss Maya. Hmm? Yes, Prilly? I guess you two can go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. Pearly, would you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me. Um, anyway. So who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask, everyone say, thank you to Nick. Huh? Uh, yeah. I'm kind of at a point where I can't even buy instant noodles, pal. So I kind of already put your name on the bill. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I got me a situation just like that myself. This camera don't pay for itself. There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself this good old beauty here. It'd be better it'd be better anyhow for 3000 I don't understand that. Okay. Uh huh, uh huh. Actually, I reckon you bought it for me since it's on your tab and all. Whoa, uh huh, uh huh. Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick. Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Aw, uh, you don't need to hold back now, you hear? Yeah, pal. Time to let it all out. This is going to be the first time I hear the real you. Go on, it's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being hostage and all. I'm a lawyer. Alright then, if you say so. You really came through for me, Nick. I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I really feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. Can't wait for the next time on trial. I'm so happy that you could save Mystic Maya and Mr. Nick. I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of which, I think this hotel is a popular place for honeymooners. So I sort of made reservations for the two of you, just in case. Well, pal, it looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Chadworth had a long talk with the chief and he got me reinstated for my sake. I heard he said things like, letting that one go is bad for all of society. I knew it. Crashing headlong into everything is the only way to live, pal. This was decent. Um, I don't know if I like it better in the first game, though. It's actually surprisingly close. This last case was pretty good. I think this last case was the best in this game. What? What are you back for? Squirt? I, Maggie Bird. Squirt? I'm retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be wait a waitress from now on. Squirt? 
and bring smiles and joy to the people who come by at the restaurant, sir. Are you going to work at Hooters? Because you're... I hope you'll stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. Um, but the best case so far has been 1-4. So one, I think 1-4 was better than this. Sorry. This was a better mystery, though, and, and, a, and a better courtroom drama. But um, I really like 1-4. 1-4 was really entertaining. Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Hmm, recently? Hmm, yes. That girl, you know. I haven't seen her around. Hmm, yes. But I remember, if I didn't so much an eye on her, I would go crack. It didn't matter if I got whipped, though. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Ho, ho. 1 4 better than 2 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. 1 4 is better than 2 3. 1 4 is really good. And then I go 1 4, best case, then, then 2 4, then maybe 2 3. I really liked the, the, the big top one. It was ridiculous. And so let the world know we are serious. I plan to make a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe. Hey, Max, what do you think Zimbabwe is like? I kind of like some of the interactions that happen in 1-5, though. Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? It was just too drawn out, but I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about it for a while. I think there's any talking bunnies that even when laughing about Mo's jokes. Which one was 1-4? That was with uh, Merry Christmas on the boat. I'm ready. I'm ready. There's no way these jokes are going to fall on deaf ears. I'm going to be more contemporary with my humor, mo curls, or something. We got our new act all worked out. Prepare for the hallelujah chorus. Say something, will you? You're supposed to start this off. Get on with it. Merry Christmas. So that's it. We're done. Yakuza Zero is next. How does it feel? What's this? Drat, it's just an ordinary electric razor recharging on its stand. I can't believe this. Really, how long do they plan on making me do this? Ah, uh, but it's Chatty Poo's idea, so that means it must have a deep hidden meaning. But why do I get the feeling they wouldn't forget about me, would they? There's no stream tomorrow, by the way, because this went so long. No stream tomorrow. Uh, it's never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world. They called me Queen Wendy, and they dreaming like world. You know, but it's going to feel the pain of the heal. It's going to feel the burn. It's being a burn playing with fire is very dangerous because of the blessed or whatever. The security is burnt out because of the thing. Was the Snickers the best joke of the stream? <laughs> Do you plan on playing Ace Train 3? Yes, after Yakuza 0. I appreciate everything you and Mr. Chadworth did for me, I think. Oh, that's right. I received the letters from Mr. on Karma. She said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful to have something, everyone. It's become difficult for me to, in this country, as such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you would like to request my services, please be sure to visit my homepage. Dot dot D killer dot D. <laughs> Except producer Shady. March 23, 9.42 p.m., International Departures, Gate 12. Von Karma, don't leave. Where are you going, Francesca? How did you know I was here? With this. That's... I heard you were planting things on a certain person, and now you're leaving to go to the Undercourt. Let me go with you, I'll guide you through. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Humph, that's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This filthy drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. Oh, that's a good point, how she knew. Oh, that's not, I completely forgot about that. That's how she knew with the evidence. I, that was completely lost to me. Oh, that was dumb. I should have made that connection. That's really good. Fuck. Fuck. That way, that's, oh God, I'm mad at myself. It's going in the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right, speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I run off with the things from D-Killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things. 
seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it he put it in here. It doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. What are you going to do now? That's none of your fucking business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Francesca, I do. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what. And failure, such as a thing, such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius, there's no doubt about that. But, but me, I'm no genius. I've always known that. But I, I had to be one. I had to. You may not be a genius like your father, but you are a prosecutor. You have, you have been and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. Speaking of that, Wright gave me this to hold on to. What if we didn't had, had not given it to him? Right. You knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. We prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. At least not just for that. I hope you will think deeply. And what is the fucking point about what you should be striking down with that whip? You haven't changed a bit. You've always, you've always left me alone and walked on ahead without me. Miles Chadworth, miles ahead, I've always hated you. And then, finally, my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man, if I could make Phoenix Wright bow down in defeat, then this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything that I've been until today. I believe you can, just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews! You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you, you were dependent on your father by using his tactics, isn't that right? I'm going to get very mean to you now, but don't worry, it'll cure you. Humph! Today, you chased after me after I had left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But, I have no intention of stopping. If you say you are going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francesca von Karma. I, I, I am Francesca von Karma. Don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now. You had better prepare yourself, Mouse Shadworth. What was the fourth piece of evidence? Phoenix Wright, one day, someday. I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then. This last piece of evidence that never made it to you. I'll take good care of this fourth piece. So I can give it to you when at last we meet again. What was it? Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, cool. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize that was that's what it was. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Um Yeah, 
been blue balling me on for six hours without dab draw. I can't, like, Lily's not here. I can't dab unless Lily's here. It's a rule. If I dab without Lily, I die. Uh, is this better than the Danganronpa 2 ending? Oh, yeah, of course. The Danganronpa 1 and 2 endings are fucking, like, dog shit. Like, absolutely awful. Like, even as, like, they have some funny moments, but they're just, just, just absolute train wrecks, both of them. Absolute train wrecks. The only reason why they're, they're, they, they hold up at all is because the fact that they're, they're both train wrecks makes, makes the third game's ending so much better. Because it builds on the train wrecks. It's like, it's like, you know that story about how, uh, the guy builds a castle made out of, made in a swamp? And, you know, the first one was made out of stone and it sank, and the second one was made out of stone and it sank, but the third one stayed up. It's like, those tra those tra train wrecks needed to happen for the third ending to work uh, in, in V3. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for them, you know, but, uh, like, holy shit. I, I don't think that was intended either. I really don't think that was intended. Um, but, like, they made it work. They, they pulled it back. But, yeah, yeah, the endings of this game were pretty good. Are you gonna elevate me to mod hood or were you trolling? I don't know what you're talking about, Zyriel. Sorry, I m might have forgotten something. Very likely. I'm ca I'm on like seven hours of stream right now. I'm wiped. Like I'm com I don't even know how I was managed to keep to keep talking at the end there. Like it was really obvious that it was that it was Maya's card at the end, and I just completely spaced on it because I'm I'm just that tired. I've been at this for seven hours now, so sorry. Oh. It's really, um, like, tiring, um, streaming and reading at the same time. Thank you for these streams, man. They were super entertaining. You're welcome, Eric. Thank you so much for the fan art, as always. Glad you guys find me entertaining enough to stick around and my dumb jokes. Turnabout memories. Oh, I get it. Oh, okay. Huff, huff. Arg, how did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake, if you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me, there's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it. Don't talk about her like that. Merry Christmas. Phoenix, are you wearing a heart with a P in it? Cause it's your name. It wasn't me. I di I didn't. I didn't do it. Five years earlier, Mia Fey, second trial. Somehow the same courtroom. April 11, 9:40 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Three. You. It's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Ahem. Oh, whoa. Oh. Alright. I just want to skip through and see if we see anyone interesting. Alright, that's that done. Alright, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Puck starfish use some bits. Uh, please loop your chair. It sounds like two Gundams trying anal for the first time. <laughs> Fuck Bob. Uh, Breaker de Godot? Breaker de go? I'm not sure. Breaker de go. I think I think that's it. Thank you very much for the new sub. Welcome, welcome. Good follow-up for that, huh? Thank you, 
Seb, Seb, the pleb pleb. Wow, for the new sub. Welcome, Seb. Thank you. Shashwami for the 29 month three sub. Thank you so much, Shashwami. Koi Vision for the 36 month three sub. Three years. Cool. Love you. Welcome to the three year club, Koi Vision. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Pumpkin Starfish shoes 100 bits. I've been gone for two hours explaining the plot. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm going to go spend tomorrow in the undercourt. Just got off work. I can't believe you're still streaming. You must have been waiting for me. I was. I was. You got to see 15 minutes live, and then and then I'm out of here. Uh, Sausage Fattener has resubscribed for three months. It's my time. It's my time. Code Ki Coyotes. Let's represent the Johto's clan. Coyotes. Coyote. Is this is this weeb nonsense? Brothers. Uh, okay. All right. Just the passerby has subscribed for the first time. Thank you very much, just the passerby. Maybe I'll stick around or just pass by. Pucker Star Fish, you some more bits to say. I'll be gone for the next few weeks again. Don't worry, I'll pop in for, for Star Ocean bits. See you at the end of November. Take care of yourself, Pucker Starfish. Hope hope that you uh wherever you go, wherever you do, that you that you uh feeling fine. Hope all's well. We might be uh still playing Ace Attorney 3 at the end of end of November. And last but not least is Pippa Blue with 200 bits. How long does it take to get the game music out of your head? I don't know. Uh, I think I would just perpetually have some music stuck in my head now. And I have for decades. It just kind of cycles. That's how it is. What's tomorrow? There's no stream tomorrow. There's no stream tomorrow. After this long stream, I'm taking tomorrow off. And so the next stream is Tuesday, and it is Yakuza 0. No stream tomorrow. Gilligan Pants has subscribed for the first time. Thank you, much, Gilligan Pants. Thank you, thank you. It's just work? Okay, good luck. Good luck with the work, Porker Starfish. Good luck, good luck. Hey, just turning in, can you explain the plot of the game real quick? It says Talking Head with 100 bits. I cannot. No. No, I cannot. No, I cannot. Seven hour stream, marathon. How'd you like these games compared to Danganronpa in general? Uh, I feel like the writing in these games might be a little tighter than Danganronpa. I'm not sure, but uh, Danganronpa's concept is way more entertaining to me. Uh, this is very entertaining, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think that uh, Danganronpa is more entertaining. I love the concept of Danganronpa so much. So much. Like, like I, I've practically, like, like sketched out a whole Danganronpa kind of story myself after playing Danganronpa. And, you know, Danganronpa's not the only thing. Like, I've, I've read um, Agatha Christie's kind of kind of book that inspired it, too. You know, that sort of thing. But, yeah, I really like the concept of Danganronpa. Anyway, see you guys later. See you on Tuesday for Yakuza 0. Do 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 do